<laughs> that was like air. It's cool. Good atmosphere. Big waves. Row number one, locked and loaded. Ashburn, Baylor, DeLong, Baylor, and Kelly ready to go on Snowshoe Mountain in the I would break my stuff before I made it to Howard's Hole, so for sure that was the worst issue I've ever done. So uh, for finishing four years, that was nasty and uh, unlike any other jeans I've seen. Uh, I mean, I wish we could have, like, reversed the rules, and it would have been a lot more fun for me. But, uh, no, uh, Bryson got stuck, actually, on the line. He was about 35 ahead. He got stuck, and I was actually being a little sneaky, and I was with a left rider. I wasn't trying to make too much noise or sound fast, and I just asked him, and he actually didn't know I got the lead from him, which makes me feel worse because he wouldn't have been pushing to catch me but uh we talked about it he i was like you know you saw the one lapper stuck and there was a stump and the other person was me and he's like that was you i'm like yeah unfortunately but uh you know and then we lost 15 to 20 i would say we actually caught back up and uh to be honest i wish we had another lap i think i think we could have got it done but what's up buddy oh man feels real good it's uh it's been a struggle for me this year i don't know what happened man just had some bad races and lost some confidence and it's hard tough to get it back you know but um do i do well here you know the these gbc tires man today were i can't i can't say enough how good they were uh, the taller tire was a good move here i'll never run little tires with snowshoe again i don't think anybody will it's definitely a different beast here though it's not your typical fast track but you know, I got all summer to, to do some local racing up north. Like right? usually Hunter comes out and Chris, so I'll, I'll find uh, I'll find what I need for the second half. I typically do well in all those rounds, so looking forward to it. Thanks, buddy. A little bit of noise for the number one, Bryson Neal. A noise for your XC1 Pro Podium from the Yamaha Snowshoe GNCC. Champagne spraying out here at the Snowshoe GNCC. There we go. We got the podium up there, man. What a race it was. And we are going to get a word with your riders here in just a second.
this morning. I'm in sharks, ready. Uh, making sure. Feeling really good. It's what it is. It's gonna be wet. All right, so I think we go through Howard's hole like right off the start. So we're gonna do like a belly button shot, something like that. Chug a beer, I don't know. Um, get through Howard's hole. Some fire truck roads. Pop some wheelies. Um, look for birds, and then get to the finish line. like on the roads and you're like fifth gear wide open you hit a rock and whew, I passed Scootish going through Howard's Hole I took the high line and went around her and um never looked back then um yeah I was just trying to get through lappers and stuff but the, the track being a little bit shorter it was good because you would get a break on the road so I enjoyed it It was great until the last lap when this thing started doing what it did at the Hoosier and at Hinton. And I knew, like, I got it to light one more time, but I knew if I stalled it, if I made the slightest mistake and it died, I was going to have to get towed in. Hey! We made it! Yeah! Uh, this one, this one was uh, the first one I count, so this one was, this one was good. Yeah. I loved it. Um, it gave me anxiety the whole time because I was like, oh my god, I have to do this again. Like, but he was super fun. Uh, you just gotta keep your momentum, you know? Like, there was a bunch of guys out there stuck, but there's a way around them. You had to find it, you had to be smart. Uh, this wasn't a super technical so shoot, but uh, definitely, definitely not an easy one. So I'm glad to get it done. But almost had second, and then, uh, my, you know, rookie mistake, and just went right into a lapper, but uh, this, this was all good. So. Thank you. Feeling good, you know, ready to ready to top the map. It's going to be a very technical day, survival a bit. So just going to try to put, keep her on two and uh, just keep the momentum forward. I talked to the camera today, and she said she had the most fun ever in her life. Now, how it's old. Mm -hmm. No, I did not. What? That's the biggest lie you've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. uh, it, was, it was quick. It was a quick trip. I don't think I've been down there for a few years, maybe. Yeah, anyway, so I was like, oh, let's go down and check it out. And, and we were walking, after the start, we were walking down, and there must have been a thousand people walking down the hill. I was like, I was like, we're going down to watch the pros come through for the second lap, then I'm out of here. And we got down there just in time for the, for the pro guys to come through, and I couldn't tell who was who anyway, so. It's gonna be a good day. Hell yeah. Maybe, time will tell. Feeling pretty good, a little. A little under weather, but hey, I was under weather at Coker, and uh, that worked out pretty good. So yeah, um, no, nah, I mean I've done well here in the in the past here at the mountains. So I'm looking forward to having a good day out here. It's, it's always fun out here, just uh, battling this mountain. You know, it's it's tough, and I, I like it when it's tough. So you're gonna try to get tough today. I heard somebody saying that uh, that's what Wibble used to say. You gotta go in there and get tough. So that's my slogan today. Oh my God, you know you're excited. Bro. Yeah. Oh, Max, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's always trying to steal something. Oh, he's dropping the F bomb on live PD, dude. I like all the guys pretty good, but I got to go with my boy Drumstick. You know, he's uh, been riding pretty good. So, um, yeah, the track's gnarly. I actually walked some of it yesterday. Um, one of the gnarliest snowshoes I've seen in quite a while. So, disappointed that I'm missing it, but um, I guess if there's one I can miss it, I, I don't mind this one. So, yeah, it's been a minute since I've hung out in New England and Road Rocks, but last time I raced here, 
That was in the center of the box, so we'll try to do that again. I'm excited, dude. At first, some rocks. Like, I like mountain bike the track. I'm like, dude, this is fun. So we'll see. It's going to be gnarly. Tires are going to be worn out. We're going to be sliding at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, I was like air. It's cool. Good atmosphere. Big waves. Row number one, locked and loaded. Ashburn, Baylor, DeLong, Baylor, and Kelly ready to go on Snowshoe Mountain in Round two in the sands of Florida. Gnarly. Feels good to finally win again, but uh, yeah, dude, it's snowshoe. You gotta love it. It's cool having a different starting order, and it's like you're out there trail right in the beginning, but it was hectic, man. I had a crash, and yeah, I kind of wasn't too pumped on uh, kind of how I set my bike up, but uh, made some adjustments after lap two, and from there I was able to ride comfortably, get a flow, pick through the pack, and get a comfortable lead and hold on. Not going to say it was easy and my brain was wandering that those last few laps because it's been forever, but uh, yeah, I got it done and just ready for summer. Thank you. Man, that was absolutely brutal. This place uh, every year never disappoints and last year was tough and this was a whole other animal this year and uh, it's muddy, ruddy, just super physical. I mean, you're just fighting the bike the whole time over on the west side and uh, I'm happy with the second day. It's uh, got some good points, and uh, yeah, we'll keep after it and try to get some more wins before the year's over. Uh, it was gnarly. <laughs> it was good. Uh, yeah, just uh, kind of had a good battle with Jordan last two laps. I passed him. He passed, him. He passed me back. Uh, last lap, I passed him again, and unfortunately went over the bars, and uh, kind of was smoked from there. Just survival. It was brutal. Both New England boys on the podium. We called yes, it. Sir. Both New England boys, both KTM boys. It's a good day. Good bro. How's it feel, man? Pretty, pretty stoked to uh, to get these white plates. It's uh, always been the goal, and uh, finally got them. That feels pretty good. The uh, keep grinding these two months and come back for the last three. I don't think so. Thanks, man. Grinding. Put your hands together for your XC1 Pro podium here from the Snowshoe GNCC.
because we got champagne showers popping out here at the Snowshoe GNCC. All right, everybody's ready. That means it's time for you guys to scream, make a little noise for your XC2 podium. Today's Racer TV presentation is dedicated to the memory of Dylan Acord. Dylan started as a local camera operator in 2019 at the John Pinton GNCC near his hometown of MacArthur, Ohio, and instantly fell in love with everything dirt bikes and television. Not once did he miss a race from the time he started, and in his time with the company, worked his way up from camera operator to becoming the full-time engineer for Racer TV, along with a position of broadcast director for all Racer TV telecasts. Dylan's presence is truly missed, professionally and personally. Godspeed, Dylan Acord. Take a drop, ready bolt, ready bolt, ready one, and take one, ready drum, go back down, and take a drum, ready bolt. Progressive GNCC returns to RacerTV.com here today with just three rounds remaining in 2023 as we come out of the summer break. It has already been a historical season, one for the ages, and you've got to expect in these last three rounds we'll have some more history written. A two-way tie coming into today. Stu Baylor, Craig DeLong tied for the points lead, and just a few points back is Ben Kelly. He is in within striking distance, and don't count out Jordan Ashburn, the Magna One Motorsports Husqvarna, the defending champion. If he can shake things up these last three rounds, he has an opportunity to go back to back. But all eyes on really those front three, Stu Baylor, Craig DeLong, and Ben Kelly. Who comes out? Who sets the foundation for these last three rounds? It is going to be an exciting one. And how about this? We've got rain. Why not? It's been the story of 2023. So we're going to duke it out here today in the rain. All that and more starts right here, right now on RacerTV.com. And welcome to round number 10 of the progressive Grand National Cross Country Racing Series presented by Specialized, an AMA national championship. We're here in Beckley, West Virginia, the Summit Bechtel Reserve for round number 10. This is the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. And already in 2023, we have had a historical season with so many riders grabbing wins this year only two riders have more than one win that being craig delong and ben kelly now let's mention those two guys again craig delong he is tied for the points lead with Stu baylor ben kelly only a few points back uh, from being right there in the fight with these guys so those are your three heavy hitters coming into today probably your favorites to win the title of course you can't count out the defending national champion Jordan Ashburn and the Magna One Husqvarna team. Uh, Jordan say, hey, some things got to go very right for him these last three rounds. But mathematically, the man is still in it. And if we've learned anything throughout 2023, it is things are always changing. Anything can happen. You just don't know. Any given Sunday, you can be the man. So take a look at the XC1 from top to bottom. Who's going to win today? I don't know, but I do know this. I think your winner from today sets a foundation 
for the last three rounds of racing. This is such a pivotal round. The points are so close. The championship is on the line. These guys have a lot of pressure, but they got to go to work. And guess what? They got to do it in the rain. That's right. The story of 2023 has just been rain after rain after rain. And we've got more of it here today. Uh, but they've all got to battle the same elements. Going to be very interesting to see how this one plays out and how the last two rounds play out. Championship on the line, Stu Baylor, Craig DeLong, Ben Kelly, Jordan Ashburn, or maybe somebody jumps up and plays spoiler. All that and more, of course, the XC2 Championship on the line, the FMF XC3125 class as well. All that and more is about to start. We're going to get in a word from our sponsors, and when we come back, we'll be down on the starting line to get this race underway. This is the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. We'll be right back. Yamaha YZ450F. Narrower, more compact, and lighter. Built to do one thing, go faster. Flexible financing options offered directly through Yamaha are available. See your local Yamaha dealer today. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive. You could save hundreds on your car insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. And we'd like to welcome everybody watching at home on racertv.com. This is the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. I'm getting my rain gear. My britches pulled back up here. Sorry, folks. Without further ado, I think we're going to meet our starting row for the XC1 Pro Class here at round number 10 of the 2023 progressive grand national cross-country racing series presented by specialized your ama national championship again the rocky mountain atv mc mountaineer gncc jeremy holbert where are you at you ready i don't see his hand in the air there he is he is ready so we're ready let's do it oh, it's gonna be a wild last three rounds of racing Let's meet the starting row for the XC1. Riding to the line first, the 514. Out of South Carolina on a Rocky Mountain ATV, Tele Energy KTM, Stu Baylor. Rolling.
going to the line next. Tied for the points lead here in 2023. He's got two wins under his belt this year. The 3-4-2 out of Morgantown, Pennsylvania on a Rockstar Energy Factory Husqvarna. Craig DeLong. Roll into the line next. The 5-3-0 out of excuse me out of connecticut aboard the fmf red bull factory ktm ben kelly roll into the line next the number one your defending national champion out of livingston tennessee on a magna one motorsports husqvarna jordan ashburn Rolling to the line next, the 3 1 4 out of South Carolina. Automatics Online, Monster Energy Team Green, Kawasaki, the Grizzly Grant Baylor. Rolling to the line next, the 9 6 9 out of Boonville, North Carolina. On an FMF Red Bull Factory KTM, Johnny Gerard. Roll under the line next. Two, one, two. Out of Duval, Washington. Aboard the Ambro Yamaha. He's rough. He's rowdy. Ricky Russell. To the line next, the number 17 out of Australia aboard the Babbitts Online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki Josh Strang. Rolling in a lot to the line next, the 523 out of Boonville, North Carolina on an FXR Lane Michael Racing Back Gas Gas Lane. Michael roll into the line next the 739 out of Morganton North Carolina aboard the Rockstar Energy Factory Racing Husqvarna welcome back to the Intimidator Trevor Bollinger And roll into the line next, and a big, big welcome to the XC1 Pro Class, the 347 out of Jefferson, Georgia, aboard the factory beta machine, Evan Smith. And last but certainly not least, making his XC1 debut, the 178 rider out of Australia, aboard the Babbitts Online Monster Energy Team Green Kawasaki. Say hello to Lyndon Snodgrass. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is your starting row here for the XC1 Pro Class. At this, the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. And as our riders begin to get themselves set in place here on row number one for the XC1 Pro Class. All eyes will fixate on Ricky Towery down in turn one here in just a moment. But in the meantime, as DJ Judd jumps into the R-Max 1000, we like to say, DJ Judd, remove the meats. The Monster Energy Activation making its way off the starting line and we are continuing, for the folks watching at home, continuing to listen to our radio chatter. We are waiting on the okay from our track crew. And Ricky Towery now steps forward and lets our riders know five minutes. We are now five minutes away from being able to get this race underway. Again, looking at a five minute delay before we're ready to roll. Blue flags wave, blue flags wave. 
We're going to get them shut down. You got five minutes. We'll call it four and a half. Glass half full, baby. Wishful thinking. I'm hoping for four and a half. Why not? Why not? Ten or ten and a quarter. Don't say that, Jeremy. That scares me to death. We don't want ten and a quarter. We want four and a half. How about that? You never know. So, again, a lot at stake here this weekend. We're silly season in full effect, right? Normally after summer break, we got four rounds this year. 12-round season, we got three rounds after the summer break. A lot at stake. You got two riders tied for the points lead and Craig DeLong and Stu Baylor. You got Ben Kelly, who's knocking on the door. And I tell you what, I got time. I'll watch Ricky. I'm going to go talk to him. They're like, oh, please don't. I'm focused. I'm focused. Live TV broadcast. We got to do what we do. I'm going to start with Craig. Craig, uh, tied for the points lead coming into it, man. Uh, I think it's probably pretty easy to guess uh, what this means to you and the rest of the guys here on the front line here. But uh, talk us through it, man. What's going through your head? Uh, not a whole lot, actually. Just trying to get fired up. And, uh, you know, we've all went out there and looked at it. And it's going to be nasty. And we, uh, I think we all know that. So just kind of ready to go, I guess. Just waiting to get it started. Hey, you've done well in, in both extremes this season. You've got to win in, in muddy, nasty conditions. You've got to win in dusty conditions. So uh, I think that's got to give you some confidence coming into today, being uh, not only one of two guys with two wins, but winning in both conditions. Yeah, for sure. I mean, any day you can get a win, whether it's wet or dry, is awesome. So, uh, a little extra confidence is good. So, um, like I said, we're ready to go. I, you know, rode in the rain this, this past summer. So, uh, yeah, ready to get at it. All right, brother, I'm going to let you get refocused there. That is Craig DeLong for a title, and I step over here to talk with Stu Baylor. Uh, Stu, got the helmet off. You're focused. You're dialed, man. Um, how you feeling, buddy? I'm ready. <laughs> we all came for the same thing. There's uh, three extremely hungry people right here side by side by side. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a good day to be a fan of the sport. Uh, that's it. You summarize it. And hey, listen, you, you came out, you hung out with us at Loretta Lynn's. You got to call some racing out there as well. Uh, and you were talking about the, the rainy conditions and you're like, somebody get me a bike. Uh, well, buddy, you got your wish. We're woods racing, but nonetheless, you got your wish. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's uh, it's fun to race in these conditions for a championship. I think probably the guy to my right and the guy to my left are, have had the same thought that I did. Man, I put in the work. I would have liked to see a dry day, but man, it's GNCC. We're ready for it. We've been growing up in, in these conditions since we were kids, and we're definitely ready for it. But uh, I, I do enjoy racing for championships in a little better condition. <laughs> That's fair, brother. All right, I'm going to let you get redialed. That is Stu Baylor and Ben Kelly. Dude, your, your eyes are fixated. You're focused, man. Uh, we, we've been talking a lot about the, the two guys to your right because they're tied for the points lead. Dude, you're, what is it? I think it's four points back. You're in the thick of it. Uh, I'm not even going to dare say underdog, but it's almost kind of the position you're in right now, as crazy as this season has been. Yeah, it's uh, been a wild season. It's been so up and down. I think finishes all around for this front line, which is kind of something different. Um, but yeah, it's keeping it interesting for the fans, like they're saying. And I'm excited. I'm ready for it. Um, this isn't the first time I've been in a tight points chase with Stu. So um, it's good to have Craig in the mix. Just one more guy. And yeah, ready to uh, battle it out in three more rounds. And yeah, let's see if we can uh, keep some consistency and put on a good show. All right, brother. Well, have some fun out there. I know you will. Jordan, I want to talk to you, dude. Uh, we'll, we'll, the defending champion for a reason. Uh, I was talking this morning with Chuck Lamaster, and I said, man, Jordan kind of wrote the, the script or the template uh, last season of being consistent, making sure you finish every race and putting yourself in a good position. And as I look through all of the contenders, and you're in that category, uh, of, uh, of contenders for the championship here at the end of the season. Some things got to really go right for you, man. What's the thoughts heading into today? Let's go out and uh, try to get a win and just got to keep the points up. There you go. Just win, baby. All right, that's got to wrap it up for the moment, but we're about to set it off here. Mountain ATV MC, Mountaineer GNCC. We got the OK about a minute, and we should be going. So now, all attention We'll go to Ricky Towery down in turn number one. Ricky waits on the okay. 
I got so hyped on the interviews, I forgot I got paperwork I got to look at. A lot at stake, whether you're on row number one for a national title in the XC1, the Pro-AM class in the XC2, the 125 uh, FMF XC3 class, or one of our amateur ranks. One minute! One minute! Until we're ready to go racing here at the Progressive GNCC. Want to welcome our new title sponsor, Progressive, to the show, baby. You guys made a good decision. Folks out here love you. Stay loose, stay ready. Ricky Towery now looks down at the watch. The man is methodical. The blue flag waves. And that means shut him down, shut him down, shut him down. As we are just about ready to set it off now. And I got to ask you, Beckley, West Virginia, are you ready to go GNCC racing? Ooh, that was all right, but my God, I know you guys maybe don't have much of a voice because of WVU last night, but we have waited all summer for this. So I'm going to ask you one more time. Are you ready to go GNCC racing? <laughs> seconds for row number one the XC1 Pro bang and we're off Craig along with a good drive right up the inside he will be challenged is that the 739 it is but Craig DeLong will take your whole shot away from the teammate Trevor Bollinger and now we focus our attention on the XC2 250 Pro class Ricky Towery around turn number one now. Blue flag waves. Liam Draper, your points leader. Ryder Lafferty, Angus Reardon, Bub, Sasha, Zach Osborne, Mason Simmons, ready to roll in. 10 seconds. Liam Draper, Brody Johnson, Mike Wachowski, Jesse Ansley, Kate Henderson, Grant Davis, Jonathan Johnson, and Cody Barnes. Oh, rough start for Zach O. Gonna be at the back of the pack and have some time to make up. And that is going to go to the 981 on the beta machine of Jonathan Johnson. Whole shot and early lead. At least that's what it looked like to me. FMF XC3 125 Pro Ams coming up next in 10 seconds. Drew Calloway, Toby Cleveland, Van Goslin, Jay Snop, Dakota DeVore, Sawyer, Karatura, Jack Walker, and Zach Hayes. Here we go, Buzz Buzz, FMFX C3, singing a song of our people. That's going to be the 545 of Sawyer Karatura. On that Steel City Men's Clinic back drive, grabbing a whole shot and early lead. Here we go with a 250A class. Ten seconds. Trevor Maley, Ranger Emmons, Tyler Palmer, Jason Tino, Gavin Simon, Bolton Beroth, Will Steven Piper, Andrew Vett, Mitchell Owenby, Nathan Kakamo, Brayden Nolette, Mike DeLosa, Joe, Joe Cunningham, Cole Forbes, Trevor Goats, and Lane Whitmer. And it's going to be the 501 of Joe, Joe Cunningham. The only thing faster than Joe, Joe is his little French bulldog. That dog's got the riz. I'm telling you what. My goodness. Open A coming up next. Here we go in 10 seconds. Dylan De La Cruz, Ezra Prine, Samuel Evans, Zachary Davidson, Jeremy Wallstorm, Russell Smith, Hunter Bush, Alex Luger, as well as Chase Colville, Jackson Barone, Kenton Coleman, James Clark, Cole Whitmer, and Hunter Smith. Oh, good and clean right there. Didn't catch a number on the helmet. Looked like the 252 on the machine. I got a 255. That might have been Russell Smith. Was it? Here we go. Ten seconds. Four stroke A lights. Ryan Piper, Caleb Baltimore, Colton Shields, Wade Tucker, T Rex, Nick DeFeo, Ty Ely, Matthew Hollenbeck, Randall Irvin, Van Adams, Joshua Connor, Caleb Hine. There. Woo! Getting a little bottled, bottled up in turn number one. That's going to be T Rex, Nick DeFeo on the Kawasaki, grabbing the whole shot. And the early lead right there. 
Here we go with a junior A, 25 plus now. Adam Machinsky, Blake Gibbs, Benjamin Fricks. Ready to roll. Ten seconds. Wesley Schmidt, Jesse Kidlow, Joshua Vitali, Aaron Higgins, Wyatt Ford, Thomas Caldwell. Coke Beckert, Gregory Funk. You know what we say, who's got the funk? Gregory's got the funk. Matt Modick, Andrew Boggs, and Braden Moore. Four, two, seven. That's Thomas Caldwell out of Denver, North Carolina on a kettle black clothing back ride. 150A coming up next. Ready to roll in 10 seconds. 217 of Tyler Shields, David Johnson, Walker Morris, and TP815 Thor Powell. Powell right up the gut. Oh, checks up a little bit, falls back into the two spot. Can he rebound? Yes, he can. Gets out in front and grabs a whole shot away in the 150A class. Senior A, 40 plus coming up next. Frank Messina, Joshua Wyatt, Vinny Tomich, ready to roll in 10 seconds. Steven Meacham, Joel Stoltz, Wade Skidmore, and Darren Darmos. Bang, and they're off. See, 819 up the gut. Woo, little slick on top. Yeehaw. Slip sliding sideways. There we go. 819 still out in front. It's going to be the 734 on the helmet. I'm going to go 724. I got Joel Stoltz out of Union City, Pennsylvania on the KTM. Grabbing that whole shot and early lead. Here we go. Vet A30 plus coming up next in 10 seconds. Mark Carrasco Jr., Joe Marsh, Robbie Norwood. Miguez Gomez, Daniel Sims, Kevin DePew, James Bauer, and Tom Truxel. Coming off the foot peg for Mark Oresco. Rebounds quickly. 406 of Daniel Sims out of Greencastle, Indiana on that Dryer Motorsports back ride. Grabbing a whole shot. Stranger there. 250B. Ten seconds. Ty Atkinson, Robert Wise, Rivers Morris, Bain Croft, Andrew Adams, Levi Riley, Hunter Lawson, Tyler Lester, Gunnar Furtick, Parker Crisplett, Brayden Sylvester, Michael Meyer, Landon Tharp, Devin Moore, Lucas Rubenstein, and Logan Pellegrini. The 408 of Michael Meyer on that No Love Bullies and Action Extreme Sports and FXR backed KTM with the whole shot and the early lead. Here we go, 10 seconds. Open B, Dylan Fleming, Chandler Taylor, Isaac Bruti, Arton Shelley, Lane Morris, Preston Barngrover, Carson Thurlman, Colton Coons, Taylor Myers, Anthony Opplinger, and the 741 of Nate Garrison. Here they come. Ooh, doing it with the headlight, love to see it. But it's going to go, I think I was the 922, no, 622. Anthony Opplinger out of Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania on that 622 lawn care back ride. 10 seconds. Here we go. Four stroke B lights. Rayleigh Messer, Clayton Robbins, Drew Hoffman, Brock Bell Soul. Meatball. Jacob McPherson, Keenan Rupp, Preston Horton, Robert DeLay, the fourth, and Corbin Johnson. Four, nine, four, get you some. That's the factory connection back ride of Jacob McPherson going up and getting it fist in the air. Do it for the gram. Here we go. Ten seconds. Junior B, 25 plus. John Bottomy, Devin Hill, Devin Hall, Logan Robinette, Blake Barker, Doug Hughes, Douglas Randolph, Dylan Davis, Aaron Waldrop, Leroy Petrie, and the 925 of Billy Saliga. 413. That is Devin Hall out of Huntington, West Virginia on a Maynard Racing Performance and AOMC back KTM. And here we go with a 150B class. 10 seconds. Jigs, Fustini, Brady Beerbaum, Briar Menace, Gavin Hampton, Noah McGraw, Trevor Golden, Nico Pursuti, Ryan Garone, and the 881 of Parker Savage, the 506 out in front. That's the number.
Let's see what's on the helmet. That's going to be the 401 of Briar Menace out of Worthington, West Virginia on that Dunlop tires and 100% back ride. Grabbing a whole shot and early lead there. I think we got a couple more rows left. Here we go. Senior B, 40 plus coming up next. George Klein's Larry Hopper. Bound Jack, ready to roll in. Second, Jason Cottrell and the 801 of Aaron McAfee. Look like the 354 Bayonne Jack. Or is it Jack Bayonne? They might have had that flip flop on my scoring sheet. Last name first, first name last. There we go. That's going to go to the 801. That's Aaron McAfee on the gas gas out of Harrisonburg, Virginia. And here we go, Vet B 30 plus, ready to roll in 10 seconds. Adam O'Dell, Nick Plank, Rick, Ricky Stanley, Scott Hopper, Zachary Taylor, Richie Cardillo, Enoch Torres, Sean Kilkenny. Oh my God, you killed Kenny. Remember that? Anybody? Nobody? All right, Cruz Johnson, Sean Natasi, and Charles. That's gonna go to the 223 of Scott Hopper on the factory connection and Stillers Motorsports FMF back KTM grabbing the whole shot and early lead. We have a free and clear starting line. You folks are free to move about the country. Enjoy yourselves. Welcome to the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. We're going to take a short break, get a word in from our sponsors, and we'll be right back with more from the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. 
you know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or, you know, a good day during the week there, but overall I think where I improved the most was my consistency and my recovery. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive. You could save hundreds on your car insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Progressive GNCC Series presented by Specialized. We are here in Beckley, West Virginia for the 2023 Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer Grand National Cross Country Race. My name is Jackson Burl, and I'm alongside Zach Karen and Johnny G. We will also be joined by Mikey Waynes later in the show, but for now, stay tuned as Zach takes us through the start of this three-hour race. Yeah, thanks, Jackson. Here, we're taking a look at the FMF PowerPoint. If you joined us yesterday, a little bit of different scenery than we saw, a little bit of dust flying on Saturday, but Mother Nature had to come and see what was going on here in West Virginia. She brought the rain with her, and we got a muddy one out here today as we take a look at the Specialized Start Recap, kicking things off with the XC1 class. And uh, this, is the, this is the excitement we've been talking about all weekend long. Tied in points, Craig DeLong and Stu Baylor. And there you see both of the Rockstar Energy Huskies getting a great drive. It was Bollinger to the line first, but sneaking up the inside, it's going to be Craig DeLong leading them into turn number two. Looks like the 523 sliding into that second place spot as well. Ricky Russell, I believe third, headed off into the woods. And so DeLong putting himself exactly where he needs to be, and we talk about it all the time in conditions like this. Vision going to be crucial. That clean start going to help him out a ton. Now, taking a look at the XC2 class, another good drive from the center of the start straightaway. Try to get that thing stopped. Who's going to be able to pinch it off and head back towards turn number two with a look over. Jonathan Johnson credited with grabbing the win or grabbing the whole shot, I'm sorry, as look at some of the Phoenix Honda boys. I believe that was Wachowski sliding around and making the move for second place as they head off towards the woods for the first lap. Oh, one rider getting sideways, one rider going down big time. Just shows how slick the conditions are out there. That hard pack base from yesterday getting covered with rain. And here comes our XC3 125 class as they head off into turn number one. Looks like a lot of those 125s are riding that left-hand side really tight on the inside. And it is going to be the 545 of Sawyer Caratura getting credited with the whole shot. The 424 coming in second. Uh, looking for Toby Cleveland. He's sitting about fourth heading off that start straight. And we'll see if the 125s are able to get through clean. This is going to be an exciting one, Jackson. It's uh, very different conditions than we saw yesterday. Uh, the specialized start recap gave us quite the look. But I believe this is your leaders coming through. And I believe Lane Michael has overtaken the lead. So now it is the 523 machine out front leading the way there is Craig DeLong sitting in second and we saw yesterday how crucial the different line choices were going to be I believe Ricky Russell was still in third and was that Stu Baylor just behind him Jordan Ashburn I'm being told was just behind him on that Magna 1 Husqvarna getting a look at Smith headed off there got the dual rags hanging off pulling out all the stops for these kind of conditions now we take a look at the 2023 GNCC points for this season and uh, it's been a tight one up at the top it was Ben Kelly and Stu Baylor that were going back and forth at the top of the list and then all of a sudden Craig DeLong said you know what I want in this title fight and you can see the, the white lines go shooting up especially here recently uh, they're at round eight able to jump up into the points lead and right before the break they come together and are tied uh, Ben Kelly I know we talk about the tie a lot but Ben Kelly's just as much in this he's just behind third in points uh, only a couple spots back and really looking like a three rider battle with three rounds to go here for the XC1 championship. Yeah, Stu Baylor able to tie it up there at round number nine. You know, both of those guys are trying to come out and get ahead, get as many points as they can here today. 
Stu Baylor's going to have a little bit of ground to make up early in this one. Absolutely. Now we take a look at the Yamaha track map. Uh, some of these track maps, we see a lot of field sections. We see some wide open sections here. Primarily, they're off in the woods. Uh, and this entire property really well built to divert rain. And that is something that we've heard a lot of talking about today. The parking area, all of this is made to push the rain off towards the woods. It's beautiful where we're at right now, but where these guys are racing, it is brutal. A lot of running water, a lot of rocks being moved around. That's uh, going to make for an already technical track even more tricky. Yeah, no doubt about it. Such a huge facility, as you can see from the map, down where the campsite is, is on the left. That is just a huge facility on its own. Then you see how long this trail is. But look at rain, shine, you throw whatever you want at us, the GNCC fans are going to come out. They're all hanging out, waiting to see who's going to be coming around in first. Is this a shot of your leader? I believe that was Michael. Is that... So Ricky Russell looks to have made a move for second. I think that was still DeLong in third. Trying to get a look who Couple that rider was that popped back in the fourth spot. Might have been Ashburn. Couple new There's faces one of the here Cowies. in the XC1. Absolutely, yeah, and that's what I mean. Trying to figure out exactly who it is. Uh, unfortunately, the mud not going to do us any favors as far as picking out numbers go. As it looks like, looks like I saw a little bit of steam coming off of one of those bikes already. And this is something that we've been talking about all day, Jackson. We've seen uh, this course not only brutal on the riders themselves, if we saw one of the Phoenix Hondas go by. So and that was your XC2 leader. It looked to be Rui Barbosa. Barbosa um, not out there. Oh, Barbosa, okay, yeah, didn't hurt over the brake. So that I believe that was Wachowski that was the top running Phoenix Honda that I saw off the start. Now, I could be wrong on that one. It's tough to tell by the riding styles. You obviously can't see the uh, see the numbers. And a lot of times in the mud, these guys will kind of change it up, ride a little more over the front of the bike. Definitely didn't look tall enough to be Cody Barnes. So Mike Wachowski would be a pretty good bet there. Absolutely. And you kind of beat me to the punch there. That's one of the big shakeups in that XC2 class. Barbosa not going to be able to be out there. He's not quite healed up yet. Uh, I know he's wanting to be. I'm sure he's watching right now. Uh, but a huge opportunity for the rest of that XC2 field. Yeah, you know, when you have a guy that's up there in the championship thick of things like Rui, it's a uh, real bummer when they're not out there mixing it up. And uh, But it kind of breathes new life into some of the other competitors, and that class has been hotly contested. Obviously, Liam Draper leading the points, but uh, a lot of guys wanting to grab a win and throw themselves in the mix and potentially take a shot at that 2023 XC2 title. Absolutely, and there were the fans I was talking about as we take a look at the FMF PowerPoint. Guys, this section was gnarly yesterday, and now that we've had all this rain, it's just gotten slicker. Uh, these these folks here are going to be more than fans here in just a few moments. They're going to be mud fleas. They're going to be down in there helping these riders through, and obviously our top, the majority of our top XC1, XC2, XC3 riders uh, will probably make it through under their own power, but especially once we start getting into the latter laps of this race, you know, we're going to be relying on these mud fleas to keep the uh, main trails clear here through these sections like this so that the uh, guys can get a good run and, and get through there and let the race continue on fmf powerpoint is going to be a uh I believe it'll factor into today's race. Absolutely. And one of the things that our second place finisher in XC1 yesterday, Hunter Hart, told me was he said he felt like the rocks were moving a lot more this year. He said normally you can kind of smack into them, you bounce off, you go about your day. But he said here some of these rocks are dislodging. They're breaking away, causing all kinds of chaos they weren't expecting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this place where I think this is year number four for us here at this uh, Summit Bechtel uh, facility. And the first year that we came, there was actually no trails on the property at all safe for some fire roads and access roads so gncc had to come in and lay out and actually cut trail uh now that these trails are getting developed and they get a little more uh um kind of matured you start getting like you said down into the dirt a little more you start to see more exposed roots those rocks start rolling around and it really becomes a more evolving racetrack not only race to race but actually lap to lap and excited to see how things have evolved from yesterday. Obviously, the rain has been coming all day long. Still taking a look out the TV truck. It looks like it's hit a pause button for now. We'll see whether or not it holds off for the rest of the race. And if it does, that's one of the things we talk about a lot. It's one thing, once it starts raining, uh, it can only get so wet, right? You know, once you dump a, a bucket of water on something, dumping two buckets doesn't really change a ton. But when it stops raining and the soil starts to dry out and get sticky, that's when things get complicated. Yeah, this is uh, this train is a little bit different than some. Like you get to obviously earlier this year we had a mudder at the John Penton, and as it dried up, that mud got really heavy. You started to see it weighing the bikes and the riders down. Uh, this consistency, the dirt here. When I say dirt, I use that term loosely because it really is just kind of like decomposed leaves over top of rock. Uh, yes, there is some dirt. You're going to see the riders get muddy, uh, but by and large, the the biggest thing with the rain that continues is, believe it or not, and we've talked about this before, we see it a lot at Snowshoe. When the rocks are clean, when it's raining, there's actually some grip to the rock surface itself. 
when you get mud over top of the rocks, that's when they really start to become slick. So the more that these rock gardens get ridden, the worse that they're going to get, unless you get like a really heavy rain that can actually penetrate the canopy of the trees and start to rinse the rocks off. And then you'll see guys kind of being able to hit the main line. Uh, tire choice going to be a big factor here today. And I think what we're going to see is, you know, if you think about our, our championship contenders, yes, there are more than three. But as you, you mentioned earlier in the show, there's three guys that are kind of right in the uh, the mix of things. And it, those three guys, they really are a contrast in every way possible. If you look at their riding styles, you look at, you know, their, their builds, like they're three very different riders. You've got uh, your points leader, Craig DeLong. You know, diminutive in stature, not a big, tall guy, rides with, you know, a lot of finesse, tries to keep his feet on the pegs a lot. Uh, and then your second place, or tied, tied for the uh, the lead there, you've got Stu Baylor, who's just a bulldog. And he just runs it up the gut uh, and absolutely, you know, feet off the pegs. He, he has great riding style, don't get me wrong. He, he's, he trains uh, for to have proper technique. But when it comes down to it, he doesn't mind letting both feet fly behind him and just stay on the throttle. And then you can look, obviously, at Ben Kelly. He's kind of that precision guy, almost trials-esque, his riding style. Tries to put the bike in the right spot, weight the right peg, all that kind of stuff. So this is the kind of track where, you know, any one of those styles could work. Uh, it's just going to kind of be who gets the brakes and who makes the right decisions. Yeah, more than one way to skin a cat for sure. And we're going to find out uh, what way works best. And what works best for one type of mud race isn't necessarily going to work for every type of mud race. And so it'll be interesting to see who comes out on top on this. But one thing's for sure. Uh, now, he's not in the lead right now, but getting that early lead, Craig DeLong, that's got to that's gotta feel good. That's a, a big confidence boost. I did think it was interesting to note. He had a, you know, by the time uh, Trevor Bollinger kind of tucked in on the inside, but uh, Craig DeLong was able to pull away a little bit, a couple bike lengths with that whole shot. One of the, I think the last time we saw him have a whole shot that big was Georgia, where he went on to win the race. Obviously, didn't lead the whole race. He's already lost the lead here today, uh, but still in that lead pack so if that's an omen or kind of a good feeling thing of any kind you know maybe craig can take that momentum and run with it now we've talked about our two tied points leaders but we got to talk about third place here ben kelly uh he's been doing his homework he's feeling good after the summer break and we were actually able to catch up with ben and get a couple words with him nah summer break was good overall um it's weird it seemed kind of long but now it's crazy that it's already over and we're back to racing but I'm excited for it. Uh, I did some local racing, went uh, back to Connecticut and visited for, I guess, the first month off, and then uh, was back down living in North Carolina, training, and just, yeah, preparing for this second half of the season, and feeling good, excited to be back to racing, and um, feeling the best I have all year, getting more comfortable on the new bike, and my body's still healing up, but slowly getting better and better, so, yeah, three more races, super tight points battle. It's going to be intense and interesting, so just, yeah, really got to make sure we execute and uh, do the best we can. And Ben Kelly, just a just a true professional in every sense of the word. He, he does the he takes the accountability. He's not really pointing fingers at anybody ever, uh, and he puts it on himself. He puts in the work, and I, I think he's going to be one to watch. I know you guys both said the same thing. You, just something about it. You got a good feeling about BK today. Yeah, that was uh, I was asked who I thought was going to pull it off today a couple different times, and um, you know I, I think there's a oh we see the everybody's standing up. We must have some riders inbound. Uh, doesn't look like they've made it here quite yet, but so many riders in that XC1 class. I mean, realistically, as we've seen this year, all of the riders in that XC1 class are capable of putting themselves up there. One guy I think we do not want to sleep on today, the number one, Jordan Ashburn, definitely having something to prove. This is a track where, I mean, his riding style, this is a rider that has performed very well in some uh, extreme enduro type format races over the years. Uh, the conditions may potentially evolve into almost that in some of the sections. Now, obviously our camera shots here are giving us kind of the toughest of the tough, but a lot of the track is well developed and high speed, so uh, there's pretty much somewhere for everybody to shine. Well, here they come now, I do believe. I was curious to see who that was. It looks like it's still Lane Michael yeah. up front. It Michael is. getting it done. He's got that feet off the peg style there, getting through some of the rocks. Carrying a fair amount of speed. There's Ricky Russell on the Ampro Yamaha sitting in second. And you know, this isn't the first time we've saw Lane Michael come out and do this, get ahead right off the start pretty much. And there came Craig DeLong. So DeLong holding down that final podium spot. I believe Stu this Baylor. is Stu Baylor just behind him, taking Take, a look over the shoulder. Yep, yep, taking a look to see who's back there. And when he looks back, what's he see other than the 739 at Trevor Bollinger and what appears to be the 17 of Josh Strang. That is one of the KTM riders there. Looks like Jordan Ashburn. There's another one of the KTM riders there. Couldn't tell which was which. I believe Ben Kelly was the first rider that came through. 
looks like there is Grant Baylor, and I think that was Evan Smith, possibly the 347 machine. And here is your XC2 leader, the 282. He has physically caught those guys, and man, I didn't have a stopwatch going, but it would be very close for him to be in the lead or definitely on the podium once you correct that time. Yeah, Wachowski, I, I've seen him over the summer break. He's been on the bike. He's been doing some moto riding. He's been putting in the time. And uh, like I said, I think he knows he's got a big opportunity here, uh, trying to make up the most he can in the points. And got a good showing here as he's already caught up to the tail end of the XC1 field. As we wait to see, didn't quite see who that other XC2 uh, rider was. Liam Draper was in second there. Uh, did not catch who was third, but here comes the rest of the class. Looks like we do see Mason Simmons working his way through there as well. I did see the 222 of Bubs Tasha, I believe, come through. One of the riders had already made their way through. And Tasha was one of those ones that almost went down on that big uh, high speed section just off the start. And that almost looked like it might have been the uh, Linden Snodgrass coming by uh, there just in that last shot. Yeah, awesome to have Snodgrass back out here with us on that. Babbitt's Kawasaki. There was a quick glimpse of what I believe was Stu Baylor. I wasn't quite able to see who that was. Hard to tell from that quick of a you shot. You blink and you miss yeah. him. <laughs> that, that was a white bike. It was a Husky. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, these rock gardens, uh, you can see now, you can almost see some dry-ish dirt starting to churn up along the edges. Uh, so if the rain holds off, we could start to see some grip come back into this track. But uh, if it comes back, I think I think it's just going to continue to get worse and worse and slicker and slicker. But, you know, that's what some of these guys thrive on. They love these conditions. I mean, we can throw out the proverbial. We've said it so many times. Jordan Ashburn loves the mud. Uh, he likes the rocks. These are tough conditions, and these are conditions where a guy like Jordan, a guy like Ricky Russell, you know, they, they don't necessarily talk about it. But when these conditions uh, come up, you kind of see them get a little smirk on their face and a little extra confidence. And look at that. Looks like Ricky Russell, unless we miss Lane Michael, has taken over the lead and there is lane in the number two spot so ricky russell making the move grabbing the lead away from lane michael and is now your leader on that ampro yamaha wow look how slick there you can see the front end just washing yeah we were talking about it today it just seemed like it, it was the simple things getting on the throttle too hard uh, pushing too much over the front end we saw several riders right there in that flat section around the finish line going down michael turning away the water. Gonna keep he focused. says there's plenty out here on the track. Ricky getting I mean, some goggles. There is Craig DeLong still in that number three spot, just kind of cruising along. You can see how ginger these guys are with the application of the throttle, just trying to maintain whatever grip they can find. Yeah, trying not to lock up the, the rear wheels, have anything kick out. And DeLong keeping Russell in sight. We talked about it before. Uh, Johnny, you were even telling us earlier in the season, these guys know as long as I can keep you in sight, I don't have to be eating roost off the rear tire the entire race. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you gotta you got to play the vision game. Looked like actually uh, Craig DeLong up into the two spot. He had gotten around, looked like Lane Michael made a stop there, presumably for goggles, uh, and now has dropped back to the third place spot. But looks like the top three all with fresh vision and out on the way. Here is, looks like Ben Kelly and Johnny Gerard both in the pits, both getting goggles. Ben Kelly taking a water bottle there and uh, pushing themselves a little bit further back, but still within touch of the leaders here. There is Jordan Ashburn, a rider we expect to see really kind of come into his own and, and battle for a podium position or even the win here today. And it looked like we uh, several of those XC1 guys had already had to ditch the goggles. I know we saw Bollinger at one point uh, early, I believe even at the FMF, he had already taken off the goggles. And so vision, uh, even more so than usual, it seems like when it's super liquidy like this, it can almost get under the roll-offs. Even before you run out of poles, you can have to ditch the goggles. Yeah, that is definitely a thing. I mean, when you have the splash coming up, uh, talked to some of the, uh, the crew members that were out there for the morning race, and you, you had mentioned how this place is designed to drain, all the moisture goes down, uh, it makes its way down into the woods. Well, in places, especially where there's like an outer berm where they've been turning, they said it's like waist deep. So if you charge into one of those too hard and hot and heavy, next thing you know, you just splash your goggles out and you're gonna need to stop and get a fresh pair. Always, uh, definitely always blows my mind seeing some of these guys in conditions like this running tear offs. Uh, you know, they, they, it's, uh, I don't know, it's not my thing. Uh, to each their own. Some guys just say they cannot get used to the roll offs, they have to run tear offs. But uh, looked like one of the KTM guys there, not sure which one it was, one of the Trail Jesters KTM guys. There is Lyndon Snodgrass. So he did, uh, I believe, lined up in the XC1 class today yep. on that 450, back battling with some of his uh, cohorts in the XC2 class at the moment. But uh, 
good to have him back out on the racetrack. We expect to see big things from him. And I did cool. see Snodgrass was running tear offs. He pulled one of those, looked like a laminated tear off right there. So, yeah, some different techniques, different strategies. Obviously, the limited uh, field division to strip across the, uh, for the roll off system. Some riders don't usually prefer it, but uh, in conditions like these, it doesn't even seem like a question to me. But yeah, I'm not out there. So yeah, I but mean, there, I, and I say that kind of in jest. That's a personal feeling of mine, but I have talked to guys that say, hey, man, I don't care if, you know, I can only get a couple miles out of a set of tear-offs. I, I'll take roll-offs off immediately because they drive me nuts and I can't ride with them. So it's a personal preference thing. Here we are, your leaders. Those are your top three. Still leading the way, Ricky Russell in second, Craig DeLong in third place, rider Lane Michael starting to distance themselves yep. from a little bit. Was third bit Stu Baylor and still is Stu Baylor there in that fourth place spot. Yeah, so Stu just starting to lose touch of that three-rider group ahead of him. Doesn't have any immediate pressure behind him. And so uh, Stu just trying to settle into a pace. Doesn't want to let those guys get away too early. And we'll see. We see some of the different lines. Some riders going further down the hill. Uh, we saw some big passes being made in the ATV race yesterday during this. And it looks like it's paying off just as much here today as one of the, is that one of the Cowie riders getting stuck? Looks like Josh Strang down there taking that lower line and having a little struggle getting back up top there. There is, uh, look like Evan Smith, another rider, giving it his first go in that XC1 class today. So a lot of guys jumping up, trying it out after the summer break. There is your XC2 leader, Mike Rakowski. There is Grant Baylor. Another one of the Trail Jesters KTM guys. Couldn't tell which one that is. Could be Grant Davis, could be Mason Simmons. But yeah, this this section here, it's a split line. And when you come down, you got to kind of commit halfway down that hill if you're going to try to check up early and take the high line that you see uh, this rider here coming up. You know, it's kind of a straighter shot, but you can carry mo more momentum around the bottom. That looks like it might be the 235 of Brody Johnson. Uh, kind of a late entry in the XC2 class this year. Had an injury and missed much of the first part of the season, but good to see him out there and mixing it up and it looks to be the top 10. Yeah, you said one of the one of the key words I feel like we'll talk about today, momentum. A lot of these guys, uh, if they're, they're able to keep the momentum up, sometimes they don't really struggle, but it's when they do have to stop. They've got to check up and then get back going once again. That's when the tires start spinning. They have trouble getting that momentum back. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the hardest things in conditions like this is committing when you're not comfortable. You know, it, it, you don't have sure footing, for lack of better explanation, good traction underneath you. And, you know, your brain's telling you, check up, check up, you know, get, get your bearings, get square, and then get back on the throttle. But a lot of times you'll see the guys that have the most success just kind of pick a general direction they want to go and stay on the gas. And as long as you can keep it upright, uh, you know, keeping that momentum is, is key in conditions like this for sure doesn't have to look pretty it does <laughs> not and and we you know we talk about that you you've got uh again we mentioned it earlier in the show the contrast in styles um you've got a guy like uh you've got a guy like ben kelly who has that kind of trials-esque riding style you know feet on the pegs great balance um you've got a bulldog like like Stu baylor or, you know you've got ricky russell who's kind of a hybrid between the two and right now the ricky russell style is working out best he's out front and uh pulling away and you know, another, we saw our early leader, Lane Michael, and had some success just before we went to uh, summer break after a uh, troublesome first part of the season. You know, Lane is, is about as close to hometown boy as you can get here. He's from West Virginia, lives in North Carolina now, but whenever these races get rocky and slick like this, you know, Lane can revert back to those tens of thousands of hours as a mini rider and, and an amateur rider, just slogging through the rock gardens of uh, Fairmont, West Virginia. And I'm sure there was plenty of days riding in conditions like this where he was like, man, this is this is pointless. I don't even know why I'm out here. But on a day like today, it, it can kind of all pay off for him. And we see him running up front. Look like JoJo Cunningham coming by there, one of our 250A riders. So we're starting to get into our 250A riders. I did see in our previous camera shot, look like Toby Cleveland it possibly yep. leading the way in that XC3 class. And, uh, oh, we do have a uh, update here for our top 20 overall. Uh, uh, actually... Looks like as they checked in, uh, it was actually Jonathan Johnson leading the way in the overall in that XC2 class. So he must have momentarily gotten around Mike Bukowski. He was behind him in this last camera shot. But when they checked in at scoring, it was Jonathan Johnson on the number 981 beta leading the way out of Landrum, South Carolina. Uh, so a big shout out to the beta team. Always good to get a lap led. And uh, he, we saw him right up there off the start. Was battling for that whole shot. Uh, Mike Wachowski was in second place in the overall and second in your XC2 class. Uh, Ricky Russell leading the way in XC1 and in third place overall, followed by Lane Michael, Craig DeLong, Liam Draper in the sixth place spot would have been your third place XC2 rider. And we couldn't figure out which of the uh, um, 
Trail Jester's KTM riders, it was a little closer to the front. Looks like it is Grant Davis sitting there in that seventh place overall spot in fourth place in XC2. Then Stu Baylor, Trevor Bollinger, Josh Strang, Ben Kelly, Jordan Ashburn, Brody Johnson up there in 13th place overall, Jonathan Gerrar, Evan Smith, Angus Riordan, Cody Barnes, Grant Baylor, Mason Simmons, and Bubs Tasha rounding out the top 20 overall. So no 250A guys or any A-class or XC3 guys getting up into that top 20 just yet. But uh, I think as this race goes on, we will likely see it, boys. My biggest question is how long can those XC2 guys keep it up there in the mix for the overall, especially now that they've physically caught up to the XC1 class? It's always a, you know, it really is kind of always a, a waiting game to see when the XC1 guys are going to turn it up. It always seems like uh, there's a few races a year where the XC2 guys will get up in there, mix it up. They'll put in a burner of a first lap uh, and sometimes even stay there for a lap or two. But if history tells us, you know, typically as the attrition starts to set in and the race gets deeper, the XC1 guys have a tendency to pump those guys, uh, bump those guys even off the podium, but definitely have always managed to bump them out of the top spot. But that's why they run the races, man. Today could be the day. Jonathan Johnson, Mike Wachowski, Liam Draper, any one of those guys could keep it up there. And, uh, you know, they say Mud is the great equalizer, so you just never know. And unfortunately, guys, getting some bad news for the 116. Zach Osborne broke down right around mile marker four, sitting off the side of the track. So tough luck for Zacho, as I know he's been putting in a lot of work over the summer break. It looked like he had a great start, too, from the start there. Yeah, it's tough luck for him, man. It's just... It seems to be one of those seasons, you know what I mean? Coming in injured uh, just before the season started and then kind of been chasing it ever since. So going to have to come back swinging at our next round for now. But uh, look at the fans just slicing and dicing through the mud here. And some of those riders now, they're taking a look at your leaders. And look at that. It looks like Ricky's got some pressure as DeLong continuing to stay about a bike length or so behind him. Stu Baylor not letting him get away. Yeah, he's no, he's kinda... definitely closed up the gap from our last camera shot there. Lane Michael keeping it right there in that third spot, not backing down. So you got four guys there that are starting to distance themselves a bit. We'll see what the gap is, but, you know, it has now opened up to well over 10 seconds back to this rider, which looks to be Johnny Girard, possibly. That's what I thought. Uh, looked that. to be the 969 of Girard, so he's put in a charge, made a lot of passes from our previous camera shot. He was back... Uh, Probably four or five positions further back. Possibly Trevor Bollinger was awesome. kind of hard to tell from from that view there. Looks like Jordan Ashburn there. There is Ben Kelly. That looked like the beta machine coming yeah, around. Yeah. Evan Smith. Um, there's Snodgrass. A string. String. Yeah, I was about to say. String. There's Bukowski. Yep. yep. Now we got it. we've got a real mix-up now that we know that Jonathan Johnson's up there because when we see the beta, we're assuming it's Evan Smith, but this it also true. could be Jonathan Johnson. This we is know true. that they are both up there uh, and likely running quite close to each other physically on the race course. How much do you think the pit strategy is going to come into this? We saw some alternating strategies yesterday in the dry. Uh, do you think you're going to see a lot of that today? I think if the conditions stay the way that they are, and uh, especially if we get more rain, I would almost say pit strategy is going to be non-existent because these guys are going to be stopping every time through the pits to try to get goggles or virtually every oh, time. No. Here we see a rider stopped. That does not appear to be one of our top guys. It does not. It's a Husqvarna, but does not look to be to be a lapped rider there at the one mile marker. But still, that's a bummer, man. You're out there. You're cold. You're wet. And uh, you just want a way to get back to your pits and and uh, you try to get leave your machine, your machine <laughs> in right, the woods, right. yeah. <laughs> to try to get your machine fixed so you can continue on with your race. So tough luck there for that rider as we continue to watch some of the some of the deeper field, you know, not our, our XC1, 2, or 3 as they make their way around because uh, I, I think, as we saw yesterday, sometimes our top riders, they make it look a little too easy. And so it's nice to be able to see uh, just how difficult these courses really are. Uh, but for right now, things looking good. Sounds like we're going to get a word from our sponsors, and we'll be back at the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer GNCC. Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. 
we're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. Whether you're looking for a tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanadi Tires. The United States Motorcycle Coaching Association has been setting a standard for motorcycle coaching since 2016. Coaching is important for all riders, no matter the age or skill level. The USMCA connects riders with coaches, whether the rider is just starting out on their motorcycling journey, to a competitive amateur racer looking to reach their next milestone, or the professional athlete trying to clinch a title. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app and get connected to a USMCA certified coach today. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. ontrackschool.com, check it out. Every race, every day, in every way. Print, social, digital, video, photo. Every race, every day. Every result, every story, every rider, everything moto every day with racer x in the premier form of off-road motorcycle racing in the world it's the beginning of a new era 17 supercross 11 motocross and those three playoff rounds Super Motocross World Championship Final. Tickets on sale now. Visit supermotocross.com. Yeah, I feel good. I mean, I've had good luck here in the past, and I ride this place well. I, I like this place. I like the track. Um, it's a little rocky technical and some good dirt out back. And, uh, yeah, just looking to uh, carry the momentum from the last couple years here and uh, see what we can do. Yeah, I'd say boot camp was a little bit tougher, and... Uh, they wore us down a little bit more for sure. So uh, yeah, just looking forward to seeing seeing that pay off. And uh, you know, we put in the work, all the Ranch Russell boys, and uh, just looking forward to, to seeing it pay off. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Uh, just because I raced the Sprint Enduro Series and it's over uh, in July or June. And uh, yeah, I got three races after summer break. It's pretty wild. Um, I am going to Argentina this year, so that's cool. I'll be heading there after Ironman, but. Uh, yeah, it's kind of just uh, a relaxing uh, second half of the year, for sure. Just just not not a lot on the schedule. And uh, I know it's only one less race, but it seems like a lot less. So there was Johnny Girard on that Red Bull FMF KTM team. And uh, Johnny looking good. We thought we saw him make, like, a, a ton of passes yeah. out of nowhere. And I'm, I'm waiting to see in our next shot whether or not that was him. Yeah, I, I, if so, he made up four or five spots in just that couple miles of racing. And uh, in that interview, he mentions going to Argentina for ISDE, uh, one of the GNCC riders selected uh, for that uh, very sought-after spot uh, in the, uh, you know, you, you pick the best riders in the country, send them over, and 
uh, just like the MX Donations, which they announced just the other day. Uh, you know, so they, it's a pretty cool opportunity to go over and represent your country. So I'm sure he's looking forward to that as well as fall. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a little different conditions there than yeah. what we'll have here today. Yeah. It's in the desert, sand, dust, and uh, Johnny's a Johnny's a New England ripper, so he's not scared of the mud. He's not scared of the rocks. He knows what he's doing out there today. Yeah, I was about to say, uh, Johnny, not uh, not new to this style of, style of riding. He was telling me about it before. He was like, yeah, it's it's kind of it, these guys are, are comfortable in this, and it's so funny for for me coming from the Carolinas. I mean, we get a fair enough of rain, but I wouldn't say it's usual. You know what I'm saying? I, I like to, I, which I'm a moto guy too. So, but nonetheless, the New Englanders, it's like it's home. A lot of the youth riders said the same thing. They're like, this is pretty much if I ride, this is what I ride in. Yeah, I mean the Nietzsche guys, the J Day guys, uh, all the guys from up that way. I mean, um, you know, there's so much racing going on up there. When you race that many weekends, you're bound to encounter. You know a few dozen mutters a year <laughs> especially in the spring and fall um you know we're kind of getting into that fall we're still in summer we're clinging to summer enjoying the sunshine but uh a day like today you know they're going to become uh, a little more frequent here in the coming months and these guys have plenty of practice like you said in in these conditions and, and riding this terrain so hanging out here at mile number eight waiting on your leaders and uh, according to timing and scoring jonathan johnson being credited as leading the way on the beta with Mike Wachowski sitting in second. Ricky Russell holding down third in that overall. Uh, now Johnson and Wachowski running one and two in the XC2 class, and Ricky Russell leading the way in that XC1. Last we saw, he had Craig DeLong right on the back wheel, uh, and then Lane Michael just behind him, and then Stu Baylor just kind of just kind of hanging out back there in fourth just off of that top three group. And, Jackson, you know, you posed the question earlier, you know, can we see one of these XC2 guys, or how long until we see the XC1 guys pick up the pace and start to shake these XC2 guys in the overall. I think the tail of the tape is going to be calm. You've got your lead pack of four right now that are seemingly starting to stretch away, whereas before the entire XC1 class was in touch. It was, you know, a few two, three second gaps here and there. But in our last camera shot, we did see the top four had stretched it out just a bit. So the question is going to be, do those four continue to ride away from the pack or do you get a chase group out of that next group, whether it be a mix of XC1 and XC2 guys or all XC1 or all XC2 guys uh, that realize, like, hey, we've got to go now before. Because the, the four riders you have up front, uh, all very strong riders, you know, have all found themselves on the podium already this year. Uh, two of your three championship contenders are in that pack. So it's not uh, taking that whole cycling strategy. Those are not guys that you want to let get away. So there's going to have to become some urgency in those chasers to bridge that gap. And if not... Uh, that may be the move that kind of pushes these XC2 guys out of those top overall positions. But we'll see how it shakes out here in just a few moments. So still wait and see where our leaders are at. They should be popping up here before long. So many ifs, I feel like, between camera shots. So we've seen things happen so quick. It's like, well, things might look the way they did last time. Or for all we know, it's going to be completely different riders. Let's see who we got here. I'm not sure that was one of our lead riders. It, it was a blue fender, but it, it didn't look to be Ricky Russell to me. Got our hopes up. Yeah, you got uh, a lot of track out there, and there's people laying all over it. Uh, conditions like this, you get out there, and a lot of these guys are wondering, what did I get myself into today? But the beautiful thing about it is they get to go home and tell their friends that they raced to GNCC, competed with the best of the best, and uh, you know, hopefully they make it to the finish line and can say they finished it, maybe even get to take home a plaque. Got a Moto Tees t-shirt on the way out. Absolutely. That's right. Show off everybody your... Uh, that is Ricky Russell leading the way on the 212. It is still Craig DeLong there in the number two spot, at least looked to be. Lane Michael there. And, oh, that looked, looked like, like maybe was there was a shakeup. That was one of the KTMs, I believe. It might have actually been Stu a little further ahead. And Yeah, I was about to say, I wasn't 100% sure that was Lane there. I thought his gear was a little brighter. That might be Michael right there. We're just guessing at this point. Yeah, we're trying to 50 shades of mud out here. Everybody looking very similar. Getting word from our producer right now. It is, it is Ricky out front. Yeah, it, it definitely could have been Stu in the number two spot. Uh, and then it was a... Trying to catch a glimpse here. This is a lap rider here. I think based off what our producer's telling us and what we saw on screen there, we think Stu Baylor has made the move into the number two spot, Craig along in third, and then Lane has actually dropped back to the number four spot. So your top four as they run, still the top four, but I believe the 
uh, running order other than uh, Ricky in the lead has changed. The next three have shaken it up. We'll see if we can get a... Taking a look at this replay here. So that definitely Ricky Russell right there on the Anfro Yamaha. Yep. Looking here, I believe just that off of the hand guard guards, yep. style. That's that's uh, definitely Stu Baylor. Yeah, you can tell by the outside chest protector yep. as well. And then uh, next should be there is the 342 of Craig DeLong. And then the next rider we just catches back. That is Lane Michael there in the number four spot. So your top four still the top four. But yeah, the order shaken up a bit and uh, shows me that Stu Baylor's on the charge and wants a piece of the lead there. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, Stu moving forward here as we're about uh, just over 53 minutes into this three hour long race. Taking a look outside, looks, uh, can't tell. They were calling for rain potentially around 245, but uh, it has gotten a little darker out there, but no raindrops falling just yet. Uh, the sun has hidden behind the clouds, but for right now, it looks like the rain is holding off. Yeah, there uh, for a minute, we had some good sunshine actually yeah. coming down. Thought we were gonna start to see dust kicking up in the fields. Don't say that now. <laughs> and it's it's so crazy just to see how how different it is if like i said if you guys tuned in yesterday uh, we had you know, big dust clouds getting puffed up and then because of those four wheelers packing down that dry soil yeah. this morning once the rain came down it was so slick yeah. ice yes, yes that was uh, there was a group message going on last night uh just among some friends and people saying you know who do you think's gonna win what are the conditions gonna be like and uh I used uh, a good buddy of mine, Ben Weathers, has a term. He says, uh, slickered and grease on glass. And that's uh, exactly what I think uh, it, it was, especially for those youth riders out that morning, out there this morning. But you guys were calling that action, and I peeked my head out and walked around just long enough in the rain to see those little guys are troopers, guys and gals. You know, they're out Definitely. there just giving it their all. You know, when, when they fall down, they're jumping right back up. Half the time can't even stand up. It's so slick. But uh you know, those are those are future champions, not only in racing, but in life. I mean, you can you can overcome conditions like that with a smile on your face. There's not much life can throw at you to keep you down for sure. And you guys obviously spent quite a bit of time this summer down at the uh, ranch at Loretta Lynn's and, and got to see conditions, uh, you know, some of the worst that we've ever seen down there. And, uh, you know, that's where the, these you know, kind of your life building skills are made in the toughest of conditions. And today is really tested folks no doubt the sport of dirt bikes the motor sports is in great hands with the up-and-coming kids whether it be on the atv side on the bike side the loretta lynn side the gncc side all the kids absolutely flying we actually had some of our gncc riders racing yet last night in the super motocross coming eight hours back to west virginia from chicago racing first thing this morning in the yxc1 super mini class yeah and i heard uh, both of those guys were up front there or near the front there for quite some time didn't see the final results but uh canyon richards who as you mentioned i heard you guys talking about this morning i did actually have the opportunity you guys were too worn out from working yesterday uh but i did watch the super motocross last night got to see that crash it was ugly so more than anything obviously awesome to see him out there racing but more than anything good to see him up and around and well um i'm sure he's going to be sore the next couple days but that's the beauty of being a teenager man you know he'll, he'll be sore for a couple days and forget that it ever happened and then uh, also uh caleb wood another rider that uh, was out there competing in that super motocross and uh, i believe was up in a podium position for much of the day today out there so um yeah tough conditions but these kids just show how tough they are to be charge their way through yeah it's been exciting to see these guys as they they come into their own as we're getting welcomed into the sport as well uh, and and lots of progression riders right? starting to make their way into big bikes and then this is cool after the break we got several riders making their xc1 debut including evan smith who we talked about a little bit we were actually able to catch up with evan and get a couple words from him uh yeah so i guess this is debut for xc1 for me um here in west virginia the mountaineer uh, pretty excited about it. It's the first race back from summer break. Uh, had a couple weeks to prepare on the big girl now and was ready to go and it started started raining. So it's going to be a wet and soggy day and uh, try to go fast and stay out of trouble. Um, I mean, nerves are high, but that's pretty normal for me. I mean, there's, I don't know, I think if you show up to a race and you're not nervous, you probably don't have much business being there. Um, but, you know, I'm not not particularly more nervous than normal uh, I'm friends with a lot of guys in the XC1 line and you know I spend a lot of time with them riding with them and stuff so hopefully it turns out to you know just be like a normal day practicing and uh, riding my buddies yeah um, I'm pretty excited about it been on the 250 for a year and a half now and uh, I definitely 
I don't know. I, I've enjoyed getting to learn the, the 4, 430 now um, for the last couple of weeks. And I, I think I uh, my riding style gels with a four-stroke uh, pretty well. So uh, I look forward to giving it a shot. And hopefully uh, this big girl will save me a little bit of energy for three hours. So some interesting news there from uh, Evan Smith. We were just sitting here talking, trying to figure out exactly what motorcycle he was going to be out there riding on. Uh, but yes, yeah, his style suits the four-stroke a little better. Yeah, and he's been on the on the two-stroke for quite some time since going over to that beta team. Uh, you know, Evan's a rider out of Georgia there, and you know he's a tall kid, uh, definitely uh, bigger in stature. So I, I do think the four-stroke, the little bit extra torque, might suit him. Uh, may take a little bit of time adjusting, but right now, not much adjustment time sitting in that fifth place, 15th place overall spot. And when you, uh, you know, mix in some of the guys he's ahead of, um, you know, he's he's doing really well. And uh, exciting to see even more manufacturers kind of throwing their hat in the ring. Obviously, you know, if you follow the press releases, you know, it looks like Beta is going to have a uh, Supercross and Motocross effort here next year in the United States. And uh, they've been working hard on getting those bikes homologated and getting uh, everything necessary for those to be able to be competing in the Super cross season when it opens up in January. Uh, I think Colt Nichols and uh, Benny Bloss. Uh, Benny Bloss. Right are, uh, and I think Benny Bloss has been seen on Instagram riding the two-stroke and, and Colt Nichols obviously right now competing in the super motocross aboard uh, Kawasaki. But uh, no, it's very cool to see Beta throwing their hat in the ring in, in uh, motocross as well as they have here in off-road. And uh, they've, you know, there's been a number of times we've seen those guys up front in that XC2 class on those uh, 252 strokes. So we uh, expect that Things will transition in the same direction once they get the uh, new bikes figured out in the XC1 class. There's some other manufacturers releasing bikes as well. Hopefully we'll see some of them in GNCC. Yeah, the, the longest tease of history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Triumph, uh, you know, they were going to release each picture of each bolt, I believe, on that bike as it came out. Uh, you know, it, I'm the hype man, so I'm allowed to say it. Uh, I think that was one of the poorest uh, ad campaigns and, and release campaigns of all time. I mean, they really missed the mark. They just drugged that out way too long, in my opinion. And I would like to dis you know, to the disclaimer, this is not the opinion of Racer TV. <laughs> this is my own personal. We have our leader on screen, Ricky Russell, the 212 machine, out front leading the way. It looks like we did have some heat behind him. Is it still... Hmm? Unless we missed him, he's actually all alone. There is Stu Baylor in yep. the number two spot. So he's opened up just a couple bike length lead, and they are coming down into that very tough rock garden. Looks like Craig DeLong now putting pressure on the back of Stu Baylor, and Lane Michael still right there. So those are your top four. And there's Johnny Gerard. Johnny Gerard. Yep. So ripping around. Uh, you said he's comfortable in these conditions, and comfort is key out here. Now, it does do you see uh, Ricky Russell having to ditch the goggles for now? Well, these guys are approaching the finish line, yeah. and they'll soon be coming in. Uh, may even see him grab some fuel. Look like Stu might have taken the more direct line up the rock garden there and made up a little time. There is Craig in third, and Lane still hanging tough there in fourth and inside of the leaders. Should see the 969 of Johnny Girard. Looks like he is trudging his way up through there now and into the fifth spot. And he has definitely bridged that gap to yeah. the top four. Yeah, and he looked like he was charging hard just in that one shot. Wasn't quite sure who that was. It is someone. Yeah, that was somebody, and they looked like they were XC1 speed here. There is Jordan Ashburn. They're in what would be the seventh place spot. There is Ben Kelly in eighth. So those guys uh, about the same distance back that they were, but there was another rider we couldn't really identify, and there could have been Trevor Bollinger, possibly. Bollinger has been there the entire race. That looked like one of the betas there, either Jonathan Johnson or Evan Smith. Uh, could be your XC2 leader, or could be, uh, again, Evan Smith there from that XC1 class on that 430RR. He spoke so much about calling it the big girl. The big girl, you know, I like when that. When you're coming off a 252 stroke, a 430, uh, you know, four stroke seems like a very large machine. And that looks like Bollinger to me. Yeah, I, yes. I recognize yep. the, the towels. towels hanging off. Yeah, so I don't know who that other rider was, but you know what? We're going to find out when they check in here in just a few moments. We'll Look get like to see. that may have been Liam Draper that just came by there, but I did not see Witkowski. Just caught a side shot of him. Kind of looked like his helmet. See, uh, we'll keep refreshing the screen. We'll know they should be checking in here at the finish line. One of the Kawasaki riders there, I believe that was Strang on the 17. Babbitt's online Monster Energy Kawasaki. 
that looked like Liam Draper I was about to say, right I think there. that was Draper just behind him, yeah. Read the 198 there. There is Grant Baylor. There is Mike Wachowski, and it looked like still Cody, or not Cody Barnes, uh, Grant Davis there on the 922. Looked like he was in touch with the leaders in that shot. So we are here at the FMF PowerPoint model number 11. We are about to go through the finish line. We'll be able to update after we get the second lap completed. And here we are now with Ricky Russell about to go through the finish. Leading the way, Ricky Russell with now two laps complete. And the first lap time of 29.29. The second lap slowing down <clears throat> almost four minutes, 33 minutes and 10 seconds is the second lap time with Stu Baylor coming in just about five seconds quicker there with the 33.05 in the number two spot for right at about an hour and three minutes completed for these guys here after two laps of racing. And every single one of these guys immediately, they come around, they take a look over, see who is behind them. Those front five riders, they all are trying to keep aware of who's who and where they're at. So we'll see. All right, looks like Ricky Russell stopping in. He grabbed some goggles. I didn't see anything else. And we'll see whether or not the rest of the field has pitted as well. Getting a great shot on our Yamaha live drone. Gabe over there hooking us up with the pit shots and trying to see. Looks like that was one of the Husky riders trying to communicate with the pit team. Now, look, we've got live here. You see him running across up at the top of the screen. It looked like the Huskies were. So Stu did pit. I believe that is Lane Michael at the bottom of your screen there, about to take the corner. And looking like one of the Calis or one of the KTM smoking big time. I believe that was Gerard. He was the top running KTM. But I saw a lot of steam come out of that bike. Possibly putting some water on it, pressure yeah. washing it, maybe to get some of the seat cleaned, cleaned off. That way you can have some grip. And those, I'm telling you what, those mud pit stops, they're exciting. They break out the pressure washer. Yeah. They hit the radiators. They hit the seats. Uh, a lot of times riders holding their hands out, they hit the gloves with the pressure washer. Uh, it's all out chaos for about 10 to 15 That's seconds. That's what I was about to say. In a matter of 10 seconds, they get everything they need done, done. Yeah, it's, I always say if you, you want to go viral on TikTok, just go film a GNCC Pro pit stop. It is just second to none. Very unique compared to any other motorsport. Wife getting knocked down, trying to hand the goggles <laughs> off. And they've got, uh, everybody's got specific roles. Some of the riders, they prefer putting on yeah. their own goggles. Uh, Bryson Neal, obviously, on the ATV side, he's got it down to a science. Uh, and then it seems like I've seen some people, girlfriend's got the goggles on, mom and dad are handing the water bottle. They got people putting fuel in, all kinds of stuff going on at one time. We just got to add like the NASCAR sound effect. That's it. Yeah. The air gun in there. <laughs> As we take a look, the Monster Mile once again. I believe he is watching us right there. Yep. Yep. He's trying to see if he can see himself in the shot yet. And we appreciate all you guys hanging out with us here on hey. Racer TV. He said, oh, no, they see me. I better lean back. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, we appreciate everybody watching at home, racertv.com. We wish we could have about five drones in the air to capture all of this, buzzing through the woods, but we'd have to trim trees too. Maybe we can add that to Jeff Russell's long to-do list. Absolutely. Trim all the trees down so we can see from a drone, but uh, making do, man. This is this is as good as it gets right here. And uh, was talking to our drone pilot who said, I, hey, I shot the Monster Mile last year here, and he's like, it is as gnarly as it is. Oh. Is that coming through clear now? Sound a little clearer there, yeah. Okay. Uh, as gnarly as it is on screen, on TV, uh, in person, this, this section is tough. It's difficult. Ricky Russell on screen leading the way, the 212 Ampro Yamaha. He's got a fresh set of blue goggles on, as you can see, and uh, looking like the battle is on here. Craig DeLong might have made it happen. I don't see Stu Baylor, so Craig DeLong, I believe... Oh, that's right. That's right. Adam Gordon reminded me he got the pass done in the pit stop. So Craig is comfortably sitting in second place. Yep. And so a different pit strategy for Stu Baylor. There goes the 514. And that's not something uh, we haven't seen before with Stu. He's he's always got he's big thinking guy. He's got a lot of things planned out. Battles on right there. Ooh. Whoa. Coming together. I believe that was Michael and Gerard going at it wheel to wheel. Lane Michael not going to give it up easy. And Zach, I see the first set of rain falling now as this race has been going on our drone pilot walking in having to put the drone down so the rain is now falling we'll see how long this is going to go for 
And according to what Johnny G was telling us uh, at the beginning of this race, this actually could be beneficial for the race pace. Uh, if that rain starts breaking through the canopy of trees, starts washing off those rocks, the, uh, the grip going to be increased as we see your reigning champ, Jordan Ashburn, come around. And so we could see, believe it or not, a better track with a wetter track. That's what Jared Bolton said himself. One less thing to worry about with uh, with all the mud stacking up. When the rain stops, it all just starts sticking to the bike. Hey, we're washing it as we're racing. Kind of helps it out a little bit. There goes another one of the Beta Boys. And uh, what a good showing for Beta. Absolutely. Like Johnny G was talking about, uh, really welcoming them into the uh, Supercross and Motocross ranks next year but for right now they, they've been around here in gncc they've been doing the two-stroke thing and uh, evan smith hopping on old big girl to 434 stroke and so uh we see yep now and now it's starting to get darker outside of the, t the tv truck the rain's starting to fall and uh, probably going to take a little bit before it really starts to trickle down through the trees and uh chief meteorologist johnny g what are you seeing out there well, I uh, just stepped outside the Racer TV studios here, and I can tell you right now, uh, it is coming down much harder than it looks like on camera. Uh, it's definitely going to start affecting not only the track conditions, but these riders' vision, and uh, it's it's really coming down out there. Uh, one thing I did see, and I think I heard you talking when I walked back into the studio, Evan Smith putting on a charge and was actually up right to the rear of the battle that appeared to be Stu Baylor, Johnny Girard, and Lane Michael, and I, I could just tell by the tone of the bike. I'm like, man, that is something different and then it dawned on me, Evan Smith, and I'm looking on screen there showing him in the seventh place spot, and uh, he is very much in that battle at the moment. You gotta be feeling good if you're Evan Smith on the beta machine out there making that XC1 debut, sitting here in the top 10 after uh, a couple laps of racing, Johnny. Um, I don't think you can ask much more out of him. No, I mean, and you know, he, you could kind of see the the quiet confidence he had in that interview that we just had there, yeah. Mikey, uh, talking about how he really has been enjoying learning the big girl, he calls it, the 430 yeah. beta RR, uh, and, uh, you know, learning to ride it, getting some time in on it. And obviously that time's paying off. Uh, obviously a lot of racing left here, still probably almost two hours yeah. of racing left, but uh, a couple questions have been answered. Obviously he seems to ride that bike pretty well. Another question that Jackson Burrell had posed for us earlier, how long can these XC2 guys hang on in those top two spots yeah. overall. Uh, now your top uh, XC2 rider is uh, obviously in the fourth place spot there. Jonathan Johnson has been bumped off the podium. And then to get to your uh, your next XC2 rider, you got to drop all the way down to 10th place overall with Liam Draper. So a big shake up there. But uh, yeah, man, great day for the beta guys. Yeah, good day for him. Hey, good day for Liam Draper as well. Trying to wrap up uh, an XC2 championship points leader with that reverse plate coming into today. Got to be feeling pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's uh, that's a heavy weight to carry, yes. you know, knowing uh, that you've got a championship on the line, especially in conditions like this. I mean, I can pretty much assure you, if you're in the position that Liam Draper's in or Rachel Archer this morning, you know, you just want a really easy uh, kind of mundane day. You want no dust, no yeah. rain, you know, just nice, calm conditions. And, uh, man, they were not uh, not afforded <laughs> that opportunity today by any means. Not at all. Uh, what do you want, the pressure of that? Hey, I got to win the title today. Or do you want to be uh, Stu Baylor, Craig DeLong? and Ben Kelly today thinking, oh, man, now we got to go battle for the championship, and you got the added uh, element of the weather we've got today. You know, I don't know that there's a better or a worse there, but the reality of it is that's racing, man. I that's mean, it. You know, yeah. this is a 13-race series. you got to show up. you got to lay it on the mm -hmm. line week in and week out. Um, I, I, I guess if I had to be in one of those two positions, I'd rather be in the position that Rachel was in this morning yeah. or Liam is now because they can lock it up, and essentially, man, now it's really yeah, coming yeah, down, boys. It, it started raining so, uh, so loud we all took a look up at the uh, the roof here in the Racer TV studios and realized that uh, the downpour is just coming. The skies have opened up. But to that point, you know, yes, I would rather be in the position of, of Liam Draper knowing that, hey, man, this is almost a gimme. Like, I, I can just yeah. kind of, like, cruise today, and if I get it done, great. I'm sure he's not thinking that way. He oh, wants yeah. to get it done today. But if things go sideways, you know, it's not a do or die. It's not a must situation. He can kind of just be smart, play it safe, get some points, move on, and, and you know, work again at the next round. Makes sense to me. Some other highlights there out of the top ten lane. Michael rolling well here after two. Good start for him. 
and we know Johnny, I'm rooting for Lane Michael. We can't be biased, of course, but I want to see him have a successful day. We'd love to see Lane uh, grab a podium here late in the season, give him kind of a confidence boost. Yeah, you know, and we've seen it uh, earlier in the season. You know, he uh, it, it was such a struggle early in the season. Then he came out at Mason Dixon and was just on fire. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for a long time that day, just looked like he was going to get it done, looked like he was going to grab the win. We were going to have our eighth winner in, yeah. in eight rounds. Uh, was not meant to be that day, uh, but nonetheless, you know, he's definitely put himself in a good position here today to uh, you know, to maximize his opportunities, potentially put it on the box or maybe grab a win. Talked about it a little bit earlier in the show. You were out and about, Mikey. Uh, Lane is basically a hometown boy from Fairmont, West Virginia. Uh, yeah, good point. Just up the road from here. We kind of think of him now as a North Carolinian because uh, obviously he does live yeah. down there in North Carolina. It was funny. I was outside and I could hear uh, you and Jackson and uh, and Mikey er, and sorry and Zach talking. And the reality of it was, you know, you're talking about Lane Michael and Johnny Gerard battling wheel to wheel. Those guys are neighbors, and when I say neighbors, yes. like they look at each other's yeah. houses uh, there in North Carolina. So uh, it's uh, definitely a, a unique situation. They play golf together during the week and and hang out, and uh, you know then on weekends they go bar to bar and uh, and throw down and, and try to knock each other down. <laughs> That's it, man. That's cool. I love that stuff. Uh, and then our leader Ricky Russell is worth a uh, four mile marker. Right here, leader Ricky Russell. Um, I go back to his win. I had to look. I couldn't remember because we've had so many this season. Uh, picked up that win in round four. You know, he started the season with a podium. He had a fourth uh, and then no points scored in round three. He comes out with that win in, in round four, and he was kind of like, hey, I'm still here. Don't count me out. Well, then he had a, a few more mulligans. He had some major downs. Uh, I got to think Ricky Russell, of all the guys out there that maybe, hey, I'm not in contention for the national title. He's probably my favorite guy to pick as the spoiler. Yeah. Uh, he's like the guy that can throw a wrench into the gears and really shake things up as far as uh, the rest of the guys that are your contenders for that national title. Well, I think you're exactly right. And also, uh, I think that Ricky is, if you had to think of somebody who these conditions kind of really exemplify what they're known for. I mean, yeah. Ricky is a mud rider. Rocks. Ricky is a rock rider. <laughs> yeah. Ricky is a technical rider. Now, again, we know Jordan likes the mud. Yes. Ben Kelly's a good technical <laughs> rider. All these guys are phenomenal athletes. Yeah. Any one of these guys could win today. But, you know, Ricky Russell got his first win in very similar conditions to this yep. in 2017 at Snowshoe, just raining, rocks, mm -hmm. muddy, sloppy, every, just a survival run. And especially now as the skies absolutely open up out there. Folks, As you, we don't even have to talk about it now you can plainly see it on screen uh it is just a full-blown downpour um can can barely even hear anything here inside the studio with this metal roof it's just uh absolutely coming down and making for very very challenging race conditions out there jackson this looks more like what we were seeing this morning during the youth races exactly and yeah it is coming down like you were saying we can hear it outside of the tv trailer just absolutely pouring as i saw some of our a class making it around through the camera shot and it looks like we are going to throw it to the break. We will be back here in just a second at the Rocky Mountain ATV MC Mountaineer. As a matter of fact, I think uh, what we're going to do, we're going to play our feature for Dylan. Okay. Uh, so as, as the folks at home may know or may not know, or if you tuned in yesterday, you know for sure, uh, we lost one of our own uh, about a week ago. At this time, Dylan Acord, and uh, he worked with us here at Racer TV, did everything from camera operator. He was uh, he directed for us, uh, just basically anywhere you needed uh, hands on the job, Dylan was there to take care of it, and uh, Adam was nice enough, and Nick V, give him some credit, the Lost Boys Tour. Um, Dylan was just, uh, had a great spirit, man. He had a, uh, one of those very genuine souls, always laughing, always smiling. Uh, Zach, I know you, you got to meet him this year and, and, and get to know the Dylan that we knew. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know, Dylan was was literally one of the first people to kind of welcome me to the GNCC yeah. family. And that meant, you know, giving me some grief, uh, cutting up with that's me. It. It, but th that's the way it is. It's a big family here, and it's a, it's a group of brothers. You know, they poke fun at you. Uh, they, they talk smack with you, but that's how you know that they love you. And so it's, uh, it's really been cool to get to know him this year. Uh, I was truly touched by him, and uh, as was Jackson, uh, a really close friend, and uh, it's just unfortunate. But you know, I, I'm 
I'm glad to see that we're able to do this for him. You know, he'd be he'd be laughing at himself right That's now. It. He'd be laughing at us right now talking about him. But, uh, no, we really did. It's, uh, it's cool when you get to meet people like this, and, and we get to have so much fun traveling across the country. It was always good to see him with a big smile on his face. Yeah, amen. I mean, anybody that travels, he's got his fingernails painted black there. If you knew Dylan, you, you might be shaking your head at home like, what on earth? But that's just the guy he was. He was just uh, kind of an against the grain. I'm going to do it for for the laughs and giggles. Uh, but, man, when you're on the road as much as we do, and I know you guys know that at home, if you race GNCC, uh, your race family becomes your family. Dylan was like a brother to us. Um, uh, we love him. We miss him. And uh, we're, we're still having fun in his honor. We've had a lot of great tributes to him this weekend. Had some fun together uh, just sitting around and sharing stories. <laughs> that is it. Life on the road. Um, you, you do become very, very close. And the guy evidently liked chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> and there we are enjoying. That's probably from this year. Uh, we, every race we've been to has been uh, raining. That was Georgia. And here they are, him and Jordan McFadden riding the uh, skateboards <laughs> through the parking garage. So, Dylan, we love you, man. We miss you. And right before a commercial break, we'll do a little moment of silence for you. of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gasket seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets Check. sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a you know a good race here or you know, a good day during the week there, but overall I think where I improved the most was my consistency and my recovery.
It's been uh, a, an up and down year. Uh, the second time that I've shared the, the white background. So um, luckily after Snowshoe, I was able to put my, sit, myself in a good position to bring it home in these last few. And uh, doing so without the greatest position on the track, but luckily Craig had a rough day. So, um, you know, it, it's one of those things where we all, right now it's basically who wins the last three races, like who does the best most consistently I guess not even wins because this year's been a, a roller coaster with uh, different winners but uh, I know I put the work in this summer I feel like there's there's no doubt that that they can they might beat me on skill they might beat me on talent but I promise they won't outwork me and I know looking back like there's nothing that I miss there's if, if I lose this championship from this race moving forward I know that there's nothing that I could have done differently and um, you know that's a that's a good feeling and I think that takes some relief off coming back to this round so moving forward you know I, I wish it wasn't another technicality race another rain race where just anything can happen I, I really wanted to show it in the in the dry but um, you know we, we've seen my enduro results this year obviously I figured something out with the program and uh, you know I'm, I'm looking forward to these last three yeah, you know, uh, taking on the role of, of running the team this year was definitely a lot more than, than I expected um, at a different level than I've done it before. And uh, it, it basically after Snowshoe, I looked at the results and I realized, like, not to be arrogant, but the only way this team thrives is if I thrive. So, um, you know, we didn't really have any other results. So it was instead of focusing on everybody else and the BS that comes with it, focus on me. And that's what I did. So I focus on number one. That's me. That's the number one guy under this tent. And that's the way that it's got to be. If it was somebody else under this tent that was besting me, then I would be focusing on them because it's, you know, for me, uh, outside of racing, I want this team to succeed. And um, this time it, it was me and it was it was what we had to do. So every extra minute every extra hour of the day from 18 days on the road my mechanic and i have just stayed on the road trying to trying to chase this bike and trying to make sure that we were the best equipped we could spending time up in new england like i know i know moving forward we did absolutely everything we possibly could so you're trying to make it happen trying to make it happen and, and we were just talking about it <laughs> while while Stu was talking about it the this different scenarios of between him and craig and ben and um we can't we can, still can't count out jordan ashburn um anything can happen i think you ask any of these guys that line up in the xc1 class this year they'll be like yeah no definitely anything can happen we've seen so many different winners so many different scenarios um you know we're an hour and a half or almost approaching an hour and a half into this one Ricky Russell's our leader, but we know that can change, too. Hey, the rain just let up. The rain did let up. Let there be light. Well, it, the sun didn't come out, but the rain no, did let up. No, the, the sun is gone. It you has... can see the river is just running down the trail. Now these guys are starting to get into lap riders, so I really think we're going to see uh, things evolve quickly here. I mean, you've got uh, five, six riders up there that are uh, all within kind of eye shot of each other for that lead. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I think we're going to start to see the herd thin out. Uh, we're going to see a couple riders maybe start to get away, start to see some uh, attrition take place and some guys fall off the radar. Uh, and there is Ricky Russell, the 212 and Pro Yamaha out front and still leading the way. And at least for the moment, all alone and no pressure from behind. Yeah, he had pulled out a little bit of a gap over Stu the last time we saw him on camera, but we'll see. There is There's Stu. Stu right there, but definitely stretched that one out so yeah. far. Stu Baylor in second, still Craig DeLong. There in third. Looked like Johnny Gerard. In wow, fourth. Johnny, that was good. <laughs> and possibly Lane Michael. I, th I thought that was Michael. Could have been Lane, could have been Evan Smith, could have been any number of You know what? Yeah, I give you all the credit in the world. That was pretty impressive that he, you caught as many as you did. Um, yeah, Ricky Russell was up. Uh, nine seconds i would say what probably in the range of 15 seconds there and, and go ahead johnny we just got a pretty guys, interesting got report update that uh the tracker is radioing in radioing in saying uh presumably the conditions are deteriorating very quickly and they are actually considering uh due to the amount of rain we just had there and folks we can't stress how hard yep. it was just yep. raining they may actually have to consider cutting this race a little bit short uh we no official word yet right. but we will keep you guys in the loop but keep that in mind we could potentially 
we were thinking a five, potentially six lap race, but most likely five. They're saying they may actually be throwing the white flag this lap, which would make it a four lap race. So now we're talking pit strategy. Some of these guys yep. have already stopped for fuel. Some of them would not have to stop for fuel again. Uh, so that could definitely lube large. And we still see, you know, four or five guys with a shot at the win here. Uh, as we're watching them come through, there is Trevor Bollinger coming through. Uh, to see who that was could have been liam draper uh looked like a yamaha coming through there with the blue shining through but uh one thing we know for sure ricky russell out front uh second place Stu baylor and third place craig delong those guys that we think possibly still lane michael there in the number four spot but uh we're at the eight mile marker we'll catch these guys again at about the 10 and a half 11 when they come through that fmf powerpoint and from there it'll be to the finish line where we may potentially see a white flag waving in the hands of ricky Tauri. um don't let that sunshine shining through the trees that yeah, you're no. seeing finally now fool you folks that was one heck of a storm that just came through we already had standing water around much of this race course and i could only imagine zach you know we're looking at the water running down this hill it's really easy to come down hills but these guys also got to go up them yep and there is a ton of elevation change at this place i'm willing to bet you that there is sections where there is just dozens and dozens and dozens of motorcycles clogging the trail and they're probably having a heck of a time to keep the the flow of the race going and another thing that i noticed doing the uh, the youth podiums earlier today several riders losing brakes Brakes entirely in these conditions I had I had three different riders lose both the front brake and the rear brake by the end of the race um, now obviously these guys are, are pretty good at keeping the bike together and everything like that but uh, this is pretty tough on machine just as much as man yeah and, and to that point Zach what happens there is when it's what I call slurry when you get that that grit the kind of sand mud mixed in with the water it gets up into the brake pads and every time you touch them it's basically essentially like putting your your brake pads onto a moving grinder uh, then the pads just wear away so quickly guys will run a full metallic rather than a semi synthetic or a full synthetic pad in conditions like this but nonetheless nothing you can do is going to keep brake pads on these machines so you end up when you say you've lost your brakes, you essentially have the metal backing plates pushing on the rotor, and it doesn't offer you much of the new stopping power. No good. No good. Scary stuff. Uh, well, we had a chance. Uh, I think we're going to show a little segment on Craig DeLong, uh, who is uh, hey, contending for a national title. He's contending for a podium here today, not far off from uh, Stu Baylor we saw a moment ago. And I think we got some highlights of Craig DeLong and his participation uh, and influence with the fuel ministries camp slight little lag in the there just like there, 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 along. there it is uh, I race motorcycles dirt bikes for rockstar energy husqvarna in the gncc series and national enduros we're here at the fuel ministry camp here in pennsylvania and just having a good time you guys want to learn how to go over some logs all right yeah come in second gear stand up lean back a little bit and pop a wheelie and ride, ride your, uh, your rear tire over that next one. And then carry your front wheel over the next one. It'll set you down on the other side and you'll keep rolling. With having a weekend off, I was able to kind of have a, a free day to, to come and, and help younger kids and, and try to improve their riding. Yeah, just to try to, to make them become better riders and help them out. Whoa! Try slowing down and not hitting it so hard. Seeing somebody struggle and say that they want to do it, but they not necessarily know how to do it or how to get there, and helping them through each step to get there, it's definitely a cool feeling. You want to try anything? Yeah, I want to try. I want to hit that double in the middle, but... Right here in the middle? Yeah, that one. You a little intimidated, a little scared? It looks worse than what it is. I want to jump it, but I'm so scared to. Which one? All of them. You're not jumping any of them? This middle one here, he's going he's gonna to try it. The middle one, you can... You can jump as far as you or as far as you need. Yeah. I'm just scared of casing. No, all the time. If you roll right over this second one here, this double second gear, and just stay on the gas all the way, you'll be good. All right. Go ahead and roll it a couple of times. I'll watch you. You're good. You got plenty of speed. Just where you roll that, just stay on the gas, steady. Steady throttle, just roll it over and over. You'll be fine. You're not gonna necessarily over jump it. See, just steady throttle, just right over. Just steady. That's really easy. That's what I tell you. Good job, dude. 
like, I always have trouble because like coming up to the jump faces, they always look so big. It's just, like, Ain't nothing to it. The bike does all the work. You just gotta go with the throttle a little bit. And me being able to, to kind of help kids out today and just give them a sense of not direction, but you know, help them with things that they may be struggling with is, uh, you know, it's big. It's I enjoy doing that. Um, something I don't quite to get to do enough of. It's been a lot of fun. Like I said, watching the kids, you know, try stuff that they ne necessarily wouldn't try, or you know, trying to push them to to br get to that next level is uh, it's fun to watch. Oh, really cool, Craig, uh, hanging out with the folks from Fuel Ministries. Big, big shout out to Fuel Ministries as well. They do a lot for uh, the sea, for just riders in general, off road, moto. Uh, they're all over the place. Mark Roberts, I was real familiar with him years ago. Was always at locals in Indiana. So shout out to those guys. And Craig's a solid dude. We were kind of joking about Craig. He's always kind of quiet, kind of timid, but just a fun dude. Craig gets. Uh, he's like in a way kind of everybody's little brother he takes yes. a lot of uh a lot of verbal abuse from the guys around him but you know he's tough uh his big brother andrew DeLong. oh yeah uh, he, he uh you know d shelled it out plenty over the years <laughs> for sure so craig learned to wear it wear it well and uh, it's made him tougher and we talked about it earlier in the season you know craig isn't one of those guys that just made the quick like i don't know where oh my gosh here's a guy that yeah you know he kind of worked his way methodically yeah. up, even through the b classes and the a classes you know he was just never that standout talent that people are like hey someday this guy's gonna be battling for a mm -hmm. gncc title but it's just every year it seems like he just gets incrementally better yep. just a little by little by little and generally speaking the thing with craig you know you'll see a guy that'll have like a really good race and then maybe back it up with another one and then a couple races later they're back there battling you know mm -hmm. 14 15 you know just an off day it happens that's racing craig's the type of guy generally speaking when he reaches a new level he stays, stays there. there he almost exactly. never kind of goes back so mm -hmm. you know we saw him where he was a top 10 guy and then he was consistently a top five guy and then towards you know last season even though he's battling for the championship mm -hmm. that was the first time we really saw him as a consistent podium guy even though he wasn't winning races and now this year it seems like more times than not he is on the podium but battling for the wins and yeah. uh, able to take two of them home so far this year yeah i mean exactly to your point johnny it's like i remember distinctly interviewing him and i said hey you're getting these podiums pretty consistent and he goes yeah now i want to win yeah and it, it didn't really take him long to, to get that job done um, and, and again, to your point, hey, he was a coastal racing Husky guy uh, for a long time. Uh, Hus Rockstar Husqvarna had some injuries, and he got the call up. A lot of pressure from the XC2 for him, and he's answering to that pressure. Ricky Russell on screen. There is your leader. We will be looking back. There is the 514 of Stu Baylor in the number two spot. The uh, increased rain has cleaned these guys off just enough. Craig DeLong now putting pressure on Stu Baylor. Wants that number two spot. Wants to get up there to battle. To the point we were just talking about, you know, he knows he's in this championship championship battle right now those two guys right there are two of the three that have been in this championship battle and they are nose to tail there in the number two and three spots now these guys are on the, the 10 mile marker right there do you think they've had team members already communicate what might possibly yeah. be going on as far as the the early ending yeah at this point i don't know that if it has been in fact decided right. and possibly but i think this may be kind of like a uh, you know gut check moment last minute decision call you know ricky's probably got that right you know the two lap board in one hand and the in the white flag and another um I, that was the pass right there wasn't yeah, it? that was I craig think Stu already did come yeah, right yeah Stu came oh, through okay yeah, I, Stu I, I looked away for just a yeah, second sorry. Yeah, rocketed through the screen there blinking um, you miss him yep so that is your top three are through we are still waiting on the fourth place rider last we knew it was the 523 gas gas machine of lane michael but looks like he has given up a little bit of track position that may be him there down working his way through i don't think he had any cards on and did he have he had gerard right there with him last yeah, time we saw as well and michael really close together so potentially here in in less than two minutes give or take um if you're Stu baylor if you're craig delong and you see a white flag you're thinking okay let's go to work if you're ben kelly right now you're like son of a gun yeah really white flag i don't i need more time yeah looks like there is the number one of Jordan Ashburn. So now looking like he has gotten up to the some number company. four spot. And just behind him I think that's appears Kelly. to be... That is Ben, ben Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. So ben Kelly's made the move. So unless we miss Johnny Gerrard and Lane Michael, it's actually those guys now in the fourth and fifth place position. We did see the defending champion, Jordan Ashburn, big jump up there and being chased hard by the 530 of Ben Kelly. Now we see a couple more riders working their way through here. Looks like it might be the 739 of Trevor Bollinger. It is... Big 
visor uh, goggle lens taped to the visor there to try and help out with vision in these conditions a little bit. When the goggles are gone, just kind of tilt your head down a little bit and take some of that roost, keep it out of your eyes. We see some of our uh, further down through the pack guys working their way through. There is the 347 of Evan Smith on the big girl, the 430 <laughs> Beta. Uh, and that thing is just a chugging along, looking like that would put him up into six. So seventh place there, uh, as which is where we saw him when he was last running. A little shake up in the order, but uh, he is still there in that seventh place spot, at least as we can see on screen. So the riders we appear to have lost, it looks like we may have lost the 969 of Johnny Girard and also the 523 of Lane Michael. If you're their cruise folks, don't panic. Go by the live scoring. Yeah, that's We're right. just calling that's what right. we see on screen. Uh, you know, it is easy to miss these guys as they work oh. their way through. The frustrations of GNCC yeah, racing right there. on screen, Mike. Watching Mike. it. I mean, that, that also puts it in perspective. And th this isn't this isn't a first-year D rider. This isn't a C rider. Those are A and B riders. So that just shows you, all right, let's see. We're going to get white two flag. Nope, two-lap card. Yeah. Two-lap yeah. card coming out. So they are deciding this will be a five-lap race, which, I mean, if you look at the, <laughs> the clock, we're not going to be much shy of that three-hour yeah. mark, the way that uh, this thing is progressing and the laps are getting longer and longer. And no, we – oh, there is Stu Baylor. For a minute, I was on the Zach train there thinking we had missed Stu Baylor, but there he is in second. And Craig DeLong putting pressure in third. So those are your top three checked in as they run and uh, a heated battle between the three of them right now, all in the same camera shot. I was about to say, I, I think uh, Stu had closed the gap up a little bit. He brought DeLong right there along with him, but it looked like they had cut just a little bit of time off of Ricky's lead. Um, I know Ricky was able to get a big view of him as he took a look over after coming across the finish line. And the next riders we think we will see coming will be the Magna One Motorsports Husqvarna, the number one machine of Jordan Ashburn and the 530 FMF Red Bull KTM of Ben Kelly. They were fourth and fifth, it appeared, as they came by at the 10 mile marker there. Russell stopped in the pits. Looks like DeLong gonna be coming in as well. Ricky Russell back into the lead. And oh, look at that, Stu Baylor in hot pursuit right now to the rear wheel of Ricky Russell and DeLong gonna give up a little bit of track position and a couple left riders actually in between there. So he's gotta get right to work if he doesn't wanna lose that pace the top two are setting at the moment. It's gonna be a minute here. I think we might have to actually go back to the uh, finish line with the uh, live timing and scoring and see if yeah, Ben checks in in the four spot. He is about a full minute, well, exactly a full minute back from Craig DeLong, Ashburn in the five spot, and he is two and a half seconds back from Ben. ben. So there you go, your top five checked in. So Ben Kelly actually made the move, got around Jordan Ashburn there somewhere in those final miles of race course there. And looks like Evan Smith checking in now. Uh, if that was him, question mark. Jonathan Johnson. Oh, nope. yep. No, wait. Yes, Jonathan Johnson checking in yep. up to fourth place Whoa. in that overall. So jumping over Jordan Ashburn and Ben Kelly. So your leader in the XC2 class up to fourth place overall. On screen, Jordan Ashburn coming in. Some fresh goggles yelling, looking like he uh, wants some additional help here. Oh, they're changing an air filter. So he thinks he has sucked some water. So they're going to have a little bit of an extended pit stop here. Looking like Ben Kelly may be back out and on track and into that number four spot, but a quick filter change for these guys. They're gonna have him back on the track in no time. Yeah, good work by the Magna One Motorsports team right there, obviously ready. I was gonna bring up air filters, Johnny. We hadn't really talked about it much this race of whether or not it'd be an issue with guys sucking up water. And that says something about Jordan as well, how uh, and how yep. comfortable he is with the motorcycle, how much he knows the way this thing should be running. And he was able to come in, immediately point, and show that he thought they needed an air filter. And they are still, looks like he was looking for something there. Oh, now they're having a bump start him. That is the danger. Anytime you, uh, looks like they did get him fired up. Or did they? Oh, I don't know. Rolling? I nope, he's oh, there go. he goes. He was taking a long way. It, likely the bike, a lot of times you'll hear him blubber and sputter once they do get running, once they've ingested that much water. But uh, that filter change that looked like it was going to be quick ended up taking quite a bit longer. So he has definitely lost touch with the uh, with the riders in front of him there. He is no longer uh, there with Ben Kelly and, and also Jonathan Johnson, uh, who are up in now the fourth and fifth place spots in the overall. Anybody else check in yet, Mikey? Uh, outside of that top five, obviously Ashburn, Bollinger. Bollinger having a pretty good day, quietly back there uh, in the number seven spot. So kudos to him. Draper and Wachowski have checked down out of the XC2, so they sit second and third in the class, and that puts them uh, eighth and ninth 
in that top 10, and then Grant Baylor rounding out the top 10. Well, what do you got, Johnny? New leader. Yep. Looked like Stu Baylor has taken over the lead with it, uh, somehow DeLong got all the way back up to them even after that pit losing time in the pit stop. He was right on uh, Stu Baylor's rear wheel, and then in the number three spot, it was Ricky Russell, so a shakeup yep. amongst the top three. Yeah, yeah I'm not sure what happened there on that one. Folks at home, you're only going to need the edge of that seat if this gets <laughs> down to the nitty-gritty between DeLong uh, and Stu Baylor with uh, – about a, what, a lap and uh, three quarters left? Yeah, we're here at the one mile markers. We got about a lap and 10 miles to go. And like Mikey said, with your price of admission <laughs> here at GNCC, you get the whole seat, but you're only gonna need the edge, folks. This one really starting to heat up with just mm, maybe right over an hour of racing left is what about what it's looking like. You know what, let's, let's talk a little bit about it with Stu Baylor out in front. Uh, talk about a test for Craig DeLong in this kind of scenario, watching the KTM pits right here. Uh, but if you're Craig, you want this moment. If you want a championship, this is the moment you need. You're going to have to get up. You're going to have to uh, figuratively punch Stu Baylor in the mouth or Ben Kelly, whoever it is. You're going to have to fight and claw your way to that championship, and Stu's not going to make it easy. No, absolutely. And, I mean, I think if you're a fan of racing, I mean, you couldn't ask for more. Uh, the two guys that are tied for the lead right now, 1-2. Uh, there is Lane Michael coming through. Definitely lost some uh, some ground on that lap. But, you know, your two guys that are tied for the points lead are now battling for the lead of this race essentially setting themselves up for the the final two mm -hmm. races of the season to try and clinch that championship and you know i think conventional wisdom would be Stu baylor's a brawler you yeah know, craig craig delong is quiet you know he just kind of lets things come to him but if you're craig delong today's a day you can make yep. a statement i mean if you could wrestle this one right out of the hands of Stu baylor i mean i think Stu himself would even be left questioning right what happened what today? happened today? you know there's yes. still a, over a lap of racing left and and anything can happen but uh Man, it's, uh, it's exciting to see these two guys going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Uh, a complete contrast in styles and personalities yeah. uh, in the roads that they've taken to get mm -hmm. here. But, you know, none of that matters. Today it's right. about who can get to the checkered flag first and uh, ultimately walk away this, the sole points leader of the GNCC series with only two rounds remaining. That's it. They're not going to be tied after today, that's for sure. So it'll be interesting to watch those two play out out of front. And then where is Ricky Russell falling into this equation? Yeah, he's right behind him there, but uh, we'll see how that shakes out in the points if he's able to come in and grab that lead back away, obviously taking 30 points. But, uh, Mikey, good point there. You know, these guys came in the points leader, but there is no path right. to having those two guys share the points lead leaving here. Uh, one of the two of them is going to uh, have to be ahead of the other, and obviously Ben Kelly back there in the fifth-place spot. Uh, on the overall does need to get over. Oh, you can see the struggle to get the goggles on. Oh, that's a tough one right yeah. there. When you, that's the problem. You know, you put those uh, goggle lenses on the on the uh, visor there, and it, it extends it, but you're just used to putting goggles on without of it. You can kind of tell that was Brody Johnson there. Looked like he was kind of rushing it, really trying to get those goggles on quick, and sometimes it takes that composure, that, that peace of mind just to say, like, okay, let's Let me do breathe. this, let's stay calm, you know, and, and it actually ends up working out quicker. The old go slow to go fast, man. Go slow to go fast. Hey, the tortoise and the hare, sometimes the tortoise gets it done. And you can see uh, even some of those riders that aren't up in the front of the pack as they make their way down the pit row, a uh, lot of standing water. It, it has kind of chilled out as far as the rain goes as I'm taking a look out. Sun's not peeking back out, but it looks like at the moment it is not raining anymore. Uh, but it, the damage has been done at this point. There's a lot of standing water out there, uh, and I can only imagine what it looks like out in the woods. Mikey, in through all the action and the chaos, uh, it looks like we've got our top one. Oh, no, not quite yet. We've got about 16 checked in of our top 20. Oh, now 17. Uh, let's give a, give a little rundown and see how things are shaking out here. We actually, sad to say, unless his transponder has stopped working, we have lost Evan Smith up in that seventh place spot. He continues to drop down through the running order. Now all the way down to 19th. Johnny Gerard also not checked in. Uh, so that oh, is right. another rider that was up in the mix there. We see Lane Michael on screen. Uh, he is currently in the 14th place spot. So a big shake up there. Three of the guys that were in the top seven overall in Lane Michael, Johnny Gerrard, and uh, Evan Smith all now. Uh, Lane has checked in again in that 15th place spot, 14th place spot overall. But uh, yeah, no Evan Smith and no Johnny Gerrard. So a bummer deal for those guys. We'll hope that they're able to continue on and at least score some points today. Yeah, I was curious to see what happened with Michael and Gerrard because we had that one camera shot. They were basically wheel to wheel and then they both kind of disappeared. I saw Michael in one of the pit stop or the pit lane shots, uh, but I have not seen a camera come across Johnny Gerard yet, so hopefully he's still up and rolling around this course. 
Uh, and he was coming to the front. That's a tough, tough yeah. break for the 969. And Zach, you know, one of the things that it is uh, nice in the booth here, nice and dry, it's easy to say, well, I wonder what happened when you're <laughs> out there and the conditions are what they are. A lot of times you find yourself in a race in conditions like that, and, and I understand it is a race, but if you physically get in a race with someone, you start rushing things, you start taking lines that you haven't fully vetted and thought like, oh, wait, this is when I checked out. I know it's going to be good. You just kind of start pushing the pace, taking the chances, and it's easy, especially in conditions like this, to find yourself stuck where you can lose a lot of time or my guess, especially with seeing Jordan Ashburn take that air filter, any one of these guys could have put themselves into a deep rut, suck some water, and could be out there trying to get the uh, waterlogged machine to refire. And that's kind of my guess what might be happening Oof. with some of these guys out there. That's rough, brutal. And finally, we now have a top 20 checked in with three laps, and which shows some love to some of these guys for sure, because Nick DeFeo's out there leading the four-stroke A lights, and he sits 17th in the OA. And then Gavin Simon out of that 250A class, 18th overall with JoJo Cunningham and 19th overall. They are uh, one and two in the 250A class. So, yeah, day is uh, developing for those guys for sure. One rider that uh, we had seen on screen earlier, and we did see him struggling a little bit with his goggles there a moment ago, Brody Johnson, rider that's had a uh, you know a former XC3 uh, champion. Hope Stu Baylor on screen in the lead and in hot pursuit. Craig DeLong looks like a little bit of a gap over the 212 of Ricky Russell. So maybe that championship intensity has carried those two away from Ricky Russell. Don't believe we saw him come through. He would have had to make the pass on both of them. That is not one mm -hmm. of our leaders. So did we lose Ricky for the moment or have those guys just picked up the pace or did like, Ricky make the pass and uh, we did not yet see him come through? Any of those are possibilities. There, is there he is. So about, uh, yeah, he's definitely lost some time. A good 20, 25 seconds back there of the lead duo. There we go. Mono Imano, Stu Baylor, Craig DeLong. Out in front, DeLong all, DeLong all over that rear wheel. This is what we want. This is what we want to see. It'll be interesting to see, too, where Ben Kelly is at uh, with that battle between uh, him and, was it Ashburn? It was Ashburn, but then Ashburn came in and that's changed right, that's that right. filter. So he's definitely. Ben's on that island yeah, right ben now. Is, ben is sole possession of that fourth place spot in XC2, at least for the moment. Uh, Jonathan Johnson, though, leading the way in that yeah, XC2 class has displaced yep. him and uh, kind of snagging some valuable points in that championship. For sure. There. Uh, you know, if you're if you're Ben Kelly on a, on a day like today where he really hasn't been a factor since the beginning, you know, it, it, at least for the win, seemingly, right. you know, you got to get as close up to you can to those podium positions to try to gain max points. So right now his goal has got to be to try to, uh, obviously he still wants to win. This yep. race isn't over. There's still over a lap of racing remaining. Uh, but if he can't get the win, you got to get every single point you can keep climbing. So he's going to want to get that time correction back on Jonathan Johnson and then go after Ricky Russell in that third place spot. But uh, a minute is what that gap was when they checked in at the completion of uh, lap number three and now out there working on lap number four. Been a wild one. We were anticipating possibly a white flag. Didn't happen. We got the two lap card. I'm not too mad about it, though. I, I, I kind of wanted to see these guys duke it out a little longer than an abbreviated race. I understand if we had to, sure, we had sure. to, uh, is what it is. But uh, looking forward to seeing what these guys can do with another lap and a half here. And I'm with you, Mikey. I mean, I think that uh, seeing this thing essentially go the full duration, uh, we're going to get to see how things shake out. And uh, there'll be no questions as to what could have or would have or yeah. maybe might have happened. Um, so it's cool that those, you know, the track crew obviously had to be out there just really working hard <laughs> to keep that track opened up and, and get these bottlenecks cleared to keep the riders moving. And uh, thankfully, the rain did let up, so Mother Nature did us a little bit of a favor there. Uh, dumped, you know, started dumping on us early this morning. Oof. And, you know, Jackson, you guys called the races this morning, and it and it seemed like at times I heard you guys talking about the standing water. It almost seemed it would be a, of a benefit to have a jet ski out there. Oh, definitely. <laughs> standing water everywhere. All the divots in it, standing water. And there's no good way to go through the divots. You'll see it right before the finish line. Just about everywhere. Guys having a willy through it. Going to be a good one. Hey, we're going to take a short commercial break. Get a word in from our sponsor, Stu Baylor out front. Craig DeLong all over him. They're tied for the points lead. Won't be the case by the end of the day. And Ben Kelly, the dark horse back there. How's it going to shake out? We'll be right back after this.
Body Tires, a division of Greenball Corp, has been in the tire business for over 44 years. We're passionate about developing quality tires that perform great and bring extraordinary value to our customers. Whether you're looking for a tire that can handle your off-road adventures, need a reliable tire to take you from job site to job site, or simply want a tire with a beefier look that won't break the bank, then check out Kanadi Tires. The United States Motorcycle Coaching Association has been setting a standard for motorcycle coaching since 2016. Coaching is important for all riders, no matter the age or skill level. The USMCA connects riders with coaches, whether the rider is just starting out on their motorcycling journey, to a competitive amateur racer looking to reach their next milestone, or the professional athlete trying to clinch a title. Download the Motorcycle Coaching app and get connected to a USMCA certified coach today. How would you like to go to a school where we take into consideration how students learn best? Well, we do that. Because we find if we can build the curriculum around the things you are interested in, you're going to do a better job. The mission at On Track School is that educational success is possible while chasing your dreams. Not only will our staff help students to achieve success, they will cheer you on to the finish line. We encourage you to check out On Track School at ontrackschool.com, where we can help you chase your dreams and still get a quality education. ontrackschool.com, check it out. Every race, every day, in every way. Print, social, digital, video, photo. Every race, every day. Every result, every story, every rider, Everything. Moto every day. With Racer X. In the premier form of off road motorcycle racing in the world, it's the beginning of a new era. 17 Supercross, 11 Motocross, and those three playoff rounds. Super Motocross World Championship Final. Tickets on sale now. Visit supermotocross.com. Hi, I'm Colton Koontz, and I ride for the Focus X Pro Am team. I'm currently running the Open B class. I'm currently in first in the points. I've been racing GCC for about three years now. This season definitely uh, started off a lot better than the rest. Uh, I definitely stepped my game up over the winter with training and riding. I've been doing a lot of off the bike in the gym training with my cousin and it's definitely paid off and I'm really happy with where I'm at and hopefully keep growing and keep learning. Racing GNCC definitely where the competition's at. Probably my favorite race this year was uh, High Point. It was definitely a fun track, dusty. First dust race of the year, I kind of get tired of the mud races. Uh, I got to get involved with the Focus X Prime team. They're, they're a great group of guys. Uh, I definitely enjoy working with them and riding with them. It's definitely helped me out a lot through the season. It's a family there, and it's growing. And for a first-year team, we're, uh, we're sticking it to them. When I'm out riding, I'm working at Letner Power Sports. We are a uh, Harley Davidson based motorcycle shop out of uh, Hanover, PA, and it's wrenching 24 7. I'm not riding, I'm wrenching. 
Colton uh, is 19 years old now. He started working at Blettner Power Sports when he was 14. Uh, over the course of years, uh, he's become a very accomplished uh, mechanic. Anything you want done on a Harley Davidson, uh, Colton can do it. You know, it takes more than just riding the bike uh, to go out there and win these races. You have to be a uh, disciplined individual. You have to carry yourself well when you acquire sponsors. For To be involved with a young man of Colton's standing, we're very excited about it. Yeah, I definitely love being on two wheels. It uh, piques my interest. I couldn't imagine living without it. I, every, every day I wake up and thank God that I have the ability to do what I do. And uh, I'm just very appreciative for everything that I've been given. There you go. Points leader, open B class, full-time Harley mechanic. Love to see it. Show a little love to one of our amateur riders right there. He nice said he's segment. tired of mud races. Well, guess well, what? He's guess got what? One. <laughs> you got a mud race Too here today, bad. bud. He put it in the universe. We're blaming him. <laughs> All uh, his fault. I, I, I again, I blame Stu. He was he was talking it up at Loretta's. Man, somebody get me a bike. I want to go out there and race. And well, Stu, you got your wish, buddy. But he's leading. Yeah, I was just so, saying he's uh, making the most know. of it. So he, so, someone got him a bike, and after today, he's gonna have to throw it away. <laughs> he's gonna have to get a, another bike. <laughs> All these guys are. <laughs> Yeah, this is tough conditions, man. Tough on tough on the rider, tough on equipment. Who's who do you feel worse for this season? Because of all of the I can answer your had. question before you ask it. I feel worse or for riders. The mechanics. Mechanics. <laughs> yeah, I'm going with Absolutely. the Absolutely. I knew where you were going with it. Oh, mercy. I feel worse for the uh, the parts guys for all the teams that are Ooh. basically just have to say, How do I copy and paste all of the yep. part numbers to rebuild a dirt bike? Oh, God. Uh, basically we're gonna be able to use the front number plate and everything else is getting thrown away. Yeah, and it's not like parts aren't very difficult to get a hold of. It's gotten a little better, I guess, over the last couple of years, but still kind of a pain. So we see a lot of riders now starting to work their way through, meaning that uh, our leaders are going to be coming through thick in lap traffic. Uh, we are waiting them here at the eight-mile marker, and uh, last we knew, it was Stu Baylor leading the way, followed very, very closely by Craig DeLong, and a little gap back to the 212 Ampro Yamaha, Ricky Russell, who's really led this thing uh, pretty much from the onset after taking the lead away from Craig DeLong early on in lap one. Uh, he has now relinquished that lead and is sitting in the number three spot, but plenty of racing action left here. Uh, we've still got one full lap to complete. Once they come through, we will see Ricky Towery with a white flag waving, meaning that one more circuit around this very challenging course here today and uh, a lot of obstacles thrown in the way of these guys to get it done. Yeah, going to be a fun one to watch as it uh, it gets down to the end. And as we were saying earlier, when we were talking about Craig, we showed the, the segment on Craig. And, uh, Johnny, you were talking about kind of that slow and meth not slow, but methodical rise to the top of the XZ1 and how, hey, once he gets a place, he's there. He's yeah. a contender. He's a podium contender. He's a win contender. I think today is another step on that ladder. Can he do uh, was that? That looked to me to be Craig DeLong. I don't know if we can get a replay of that shot. Well, let's see who this We don't is. need it. That's Stu Baylor That's right Stu, there. So. Craig DeLong has taken the lead well, uh, go. and gotten around <laughs> Stu Baylor. And just a couple bike lengths there, maybe was, two, three five seconds. Second late. Yeah. Five seconds late on uh, making that call. But, well, there you go. There's the answer. Um, you know, Craig DeLong, he's got to take that step to make that grown man move to get around big Stu yeah. Baylor. Hey, you're borrowing a James Stewart thing there. You can't, the grown man pass. We That's did get it. to see the pass, but he's made the grown man move. Taking over the lead, back out front. He had the whole shot, and this is the first time we've seen him back out front since then. Now nearing the completion of lap number four, a white flag waving. Craig DeLong has taken control, but Stu Baylor is in hot pursuit. We do not expect to let him, see him let this win get away yeah. from him without putting up a fight. Yeah, where we were questioning, hey, will Craig do it? Will Craig uh, make an attack? Will he take a shot? We I, know Stu will if he gets an opportunity. I believe that was Ricky Russell that just came through there in the number 212 machine. Uh, so still close enough to make a, a run at the leaders. Definitely not out of this one, but uh, definitely having uh, lost the lead there in the early miles of lap number four, uh, it seems that the pace has kind of continued without him. And now he's got to pick it up even more to bridge that gap if he wants to get back in the fight for the win here today. Things developing late in this one. Three laps into it. Next time they check in for that white flag, we got about 11 minutes. So we got plenty of time yet before we get there. 
And I think we're going to see the lap times continue to, uh, you know, increase. We, we saw the first lap was 29, second lap was 33, then 34 the last lap. Uh, I think, <laughs> excuse me, now that the rain has stopped, they may kind of stabilize there in that, you know, 34-minute uh, range. But I don't think we're going to see them get much quicker. A lot of times late in the GNCCs, we will see one of these guys or several of them put in a sprint, you know, shave a minute plus off a lap time. The track conditions on a day like today, I believe that was Ben Kelly there. Uh, in the number four spot, uh, the track conditions just not really lending themselves to somebody wanting to really put in a sprint and get up there, uh, make up a big gap of time or, or pull a lead. It's just kind of you got to take what the track will give you on a day like today. That's for sure. And we haven't really talked much about it, but you have to think it's a factor of the lap traffic out there. Uh, we got a good example earlier of our pro guys going through a section, you know, making it look flawless, making it look easy, and then A and B riders falling down, picking the bike app back up falling back down so uh just that added element of running gnccs hey you're out there with some of the amateur guys too got to get around them we know they're good at it but sometimes it is difficult in these conditions watching another rider come through i believe that was another one of the husky riders could have been uh jordan ashburn yeah i was been, say, i think it like might have been ash rider coming through even after that lengthy filter change you know he's going to be on the charge and trying to make up any ground that he did lose there Trevor Bollinger should be the net one of the next riders we see coming through, as well as Liam Draper, uh, our second place rider in that XC2 class. Jonathan Johnson, I think he did already come through there on screen uh, and marching to what, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe would be his first ever XC1 win. I know he has had a podium in the past. Uh, we need our statistician here, uh, <laughs> Rodney Tomlin. He may know that yeah, off the right. top of his head. <laughs> We're going to have to do a deep dive into Jonathan Johnson's history to see if he has. I do not believe he has ever won an XC1 race. I know he has had XC2. podiums. Or, sorry, yeah, yeah, XC2 yeah. race. Uh, I know he has had podiums, uh, obviously has won championships in other classes, but I do not believe he has ever won an XC2 race. Boy, good question. Well, he's certainly poised to do so today. Last When they checked in, he had a minute seven on Liam Draper, who's in the two spot. Wachowski third, Barnes fourth, and Gus Reardon back in the five spot. So he's doing the right things. Dakota DeVore leading that FMF XC3 125 class. Drew Calloway in the two spot. Dakota DeVore with an enormous lead. Big separation in can't, the XC3 can't class. Can't say Go any ahead. surprise there. Conditions oh, yeah, like that. For sure. Jay Lipscomb and Dakota DeVore are just yes. on another level in that XC3 class when the conditions get like this. And uh, obviously with Jay Lipscomb out today yeah. with an injury, you know, K Dakota DeVore is just, uh, I mean, he really is the class of that field in conditions like this. Yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, Toby Cleveland has, has kind of been uh, in the point position throughout that championship battle this year. But Dakota DeVore getting a number of wins and in conditions like this, he is really hard to match in that class yeah and tough break for toby at least up to now unless he's having some transponders it's transponder issues he has not checked in for a third lap completed so drew calloway in the two spots sawyer caratura running out the top three there in that xc3 One of the things that I find interesting here with these final couple races is the the big picture. Obviously, all year long, everybody says, "Oh, well, you know, we'll worry about the championship later. Let's get to let's get to the northern rounds. Let's get to the summer break." Now it's like, okay, only three rounds left. Especially as close as this point battle is, uh, how much do you think the the championship pressure is is really starting to be put on? It's it's points games. It's figuring out exactly where everybody's at for the overall series, as much as it is a race to race mindset. Yeah, I mean, it, it's when you get into this, it, it, it is a mind game, just exactly like what you're saying. It's it's a matter of the points you can't change, but how you think about them is, is what really looms large when you're out there on the track. I mean, if you start counting points and everything's about, you know, strategic moves, sometimes you can overlook the simplest of things on the track. And uh, really, honestly, everybody's going to handle that differently. And kind of to our point we were talking about earlier, Craig DeLong, this is the first time well, actually, last year he was in that yeah. championship yeah, battle. Yeah, he was. Um, you know, but without winning a race, where this year he's been winning the race, has won a few races, has put himself in this position, you know, so he's got a little bit of experience. Stu Baylor has been in the championship battle a number of times. Yeah. So these are two guys that, although neither of them have ever won the championship, they both have put themselves in this position. They've learned from that. We're going to see who learned quicker, who learned most, and uh, who can put what they've learned to use. Yeah, 
Talking about pressure, though, to add to that, Johnny, and Stu has admitted this himself, you know, he's not just a racer right now. He's managing the team. He's got to, you know, make the phone calls for parts and, and just everything top to bottom. Stu's wearing a lot of different hats. So he's – and but that's self-inflicted pressure as well. Sure. Yeah, and that's – I mean, there's a lot – that goes along with having a team of people around you, especially a team of people that are experienced and, and have a, a resume to say that they know exactly what they're doing. You know, Stu obviously kind of likes to work outside the um, the realm of, of what is normal within the industry. Uh, he's done that for a number of years. He likes to make his own way, likes to pave his own path. Uh, adding team owner and, and kind of, I don't know if his official title as team right. manager yeah, or point, not point, yeah. um you know i know he has a lot of help over there yeah. and a lot of people that are very knowledgeable but it's also a struggle to try and uh keep all that straight while yeah. you're out there racing and while you're focusing on other things and and yeah man it's tough it's uh it, he's taken a lot on but he's he's also one of those people that seems like you put him in a corner you put his back against For the wall sure. and that's yeah. when he really shines we, we learned that the hard way a couple of seasons ago. Every time we'd kind of count Stu out, he'd come roaring back, whether it was race, uh, points chase, whatever the scenario was. It just uh, That's the moment. You, you question Stu Baylor, he's going to come out and, and prove you wrong and do something totally opposite and make you eat your words. He's really good at that. <laughs> yeah. So you put his back against the wall, he's going to come out fighting even stronger. And I wouldn't say right now he definitely doesn't have his back against the wall. Oh, no. I mean, he's been in the thick of this championship on really all year long, uh, save for – either really rough round that he had at, at Camp Coker where he didn't score any points, yeah. uh, but right after that coming back out firing and, you know, putting himself consistently in podium positions and, and keeping himself right in the in the thick of this championship battle. Yeah, it's very interesting as you look through the season, you look at everybody's pretty much consistent, like consistent finishes, kind of that Jordan Ashburn script, but there's just like those one-off races, those little mulligans this year. Uh, each guy has had at least one or two of those, and it's – between that, all the different winners, it's been a historical season. I think it's going to be a historical finish. Uh, certainly going to take us to the end of Ironman before we know who's, who's winning a championship. Well, and if you look at that, exactly what you're talking about, the mulligan, the one-off yeah. race, you know, Ben Kelly and Stuart Baylor of your, and, and even if you throw Jordan Ashburn in there, um, you know, the three of your top four guys, they're, each of their off race was a mechanical yeah. an issue where they weren't able to finish, had a bike failure or some type of failure that prevented them from finishing. If you look at Craig DeLong on the flip side of that, his off race, if you will, I say that in air quotes, was snowshoe. Finished 11th overall. Yep. Just, you know, I'm sure he had some struggles, but it, it was uh, just a bad race for him. So this is really an opportunity for him to bounce back. We've seen Jordan bounce back. Yeah. We've seen uh, Ben bounce back. We've seen Stu bounce back after their off weekends. You know, Craig, unfortunately, had this 11-week stretch after yes. his off weekend yes. where it was the entirety of summer break. Mm -hmm. And I actually – oh, look at this. Stu Baylor has taken over the lead. Craig Stu DeLong Baylor. right behind him. So here we see the battle we're talking about is evolving on screen. We're getting to see it in real time, different lines down that downhill there. And we've got that very technical rock climb coming up uh, here in just a matter of a couple hundred yards. So back and forth, you knew, you knew Stu was going to answer back, fire back, and, and take a shot. He did. He's out in front. Now can Craig DeLong do whatever he did earlier to get around Stu Baylor and answer right back? Yeah, we may have lost that camera shot there because that was the uh, rock garden. They've just crawled their way through now, and there's a couple lines through there. So, again, oh, here they come now, and Stu Baylor feet off the pegs, uh, trying to work his way through, and Craig DeLong almost making the pass, having to go up on the high side there to try and find some grip, then down. You can see alternating lines there just trying to keep each other in check and keep this battle moving along, and it is a barn burner. Mercy, it makes the uh, the heart flutter a little watching those guys rip through there, waiting on somebody to topple over something. Here and is your third Ricky. place runner. And Ricky Russell there in third, led the way for most of this one, and somewhere on this last lap, it just kind of started to get away from him. We saw he was leading when they left the pits. The next shot we saw, he had dropped back to that third place spot, and has kind of been giving up more and more ground ever since. So he has uh, lost the pace. Maybe a fresh set of goggles and, uh, you know, a little water bottle can get him back on track. He's definitely still within striking distance yeah. to these guys if he can put together a good couple miles and uh, very technical route. You can see feet off the pegs, long legs for Ricky Russell, just absolutely trucking right up through that rock garden at the FMF PowerPoint on that Ampro Yamaha, hard on the throttle and in pursuit of the two leaders. Ricky Scoot is still on that island right now. And behind him, Ben Kelly. And does Ben Kelly know Jonathan Johnson's got him on adjusted time right now? 
I would have to assume that the crew's giving, uh, you know, they're kind of watching the race evolve, and if they feel like Ben isn't making the kind of progress where he would displace Jonathan on, on corrected time, yeah. I'm sure that will let him know. Uh, looks like that may be Ben Kelly right there, in which case he has made up a little bit of time on Ricky Russell, I would say. That is Ben. So there is your fourth place rider as they run on the track. Again, no goggles, and that's the thing. You know, in these kind of conditions, it's just so tough to keep those goggles on. But you almost have to take the discipline to stop and get a fresh set, even though you yeah. know you're going to be pitching them in a few miles, because just that couple miles of kind of letting your eyes. I heard Jackson talking about it. Jackson and Zach both talking about it this morning. You know, the the um, when the mud packs in there, your eyes are kind of secreting that. Um, you know the tears if you yeah, will that, that to me yeah to, <laughs> yes. to push all that mo the mud out but eventually you, you get so much stuff packed in there that it's uh you start to scratch corneas and that kind of stuff so anything you can do to keep the vision clear uh is is definitely in your best interest watching the fmf powerpoint just saw ben kelly Colt roll through we talk about riding style especially in conditions like this johnny and oh we're flipping back and forth Here thought we, we might have been seeing the 981 out. of jonathan johnson coming up there but uh there is your lead duo Still craig in, in pursuit yep. baylor and delong there's a 514 a little check up from the neck up right there by Stu. wants to know exactly where craig is at how can you get better racing than this oh, Our two points goodness. leaders going head to head Listen, the conditions may not be ideal, but the action is. And like Jackson said, I mean, this is, you couldn't have scripted this any better. One lap of racing remaining, and one of these two guys looking like if things continue like they are, one of the two of them will be leaving as the sole points leader in the championship chase for the 2023 GNCC overall championship. Going to be interesting. Last lap. Here we go. Stu out in front when they checked in. Forget it. Let's throw the gap out the window. It doesn't matter. It says 1.7. It's it's a baby blanket at this point. 1.7 inches, maybe. That's it. We've got some smoke coming off this machine, and I think uh, that's something, obviously. Oh, you see nothing but Pro the big, strong gonna, arm. Yeah, fired up. And well, Craig looking oh, like Craig. trying to make the pass on the inside. No goggles, no pits for either of these guys. They're just saying, one more lap. We're going to throw a caution to the wind and go after it. Actually surprised. Didn't see either of them come in for fresh goggles. Freshies. But neither of them wanted to give up track position. They both still had goggles on. And, uh, you know, being out front at this point may be more important than, uh, than actually, you know, having fresh yeah. vision. Because if you got to come from behind, you're going to have to eat a lot of roost. Got to hand it to Craig trying to take a shot. And the little squirrely right there, but boy, going to work on them. It'll be fun to watch these guys get down to the wire here. We are 35 minutes away, a long way to go. Uh, so much pressure on these guys. You, you, one, you're worried, I don't want to connect with Stu. I don't want to connect with Craig. I want to ride my own race, stay within my own helmet. I want to hit my marks. Well, in these conditions, you can't necessarily plan on going out there and hitting all those good lines. They're probably not going to be there. This track is ever-changing right now. Looking like Ricky getting a fresh set of goggles and also grabbing a drink there. So he's, uh, again, getting some hydration, some fresh vision, and back out on track in pursuit of the two leaders sitting there solidly in that third place position. Go, Ricky, go. Looks like Ricky's choosing to use the roll-off system here for this last lap. See if Ben stops for goggles pit crew looks like they might be ready for him he has checked in he checked in 31.8 seconds back from ricky russell looks like that is him there will he stop he's got the foot out looking like he's kind of headed over that general direction camera angle is kind of funny look a little further left of screen than i thought all right pair of freshies so looking like give or take about 25 seconds back of ricky russell after Ricky's pit and at the finish line there it was 31 seconds which makes sense Ricky came in actually had a little longer pit took the goggles and a drink so been able to make up about five seconds there so that is what the difference is between the podium positions there obviously you're one and two spots basically wheel to wheel and likely probably swap positions two or three times since we saw him on screen last and then a uh, little gap back to Ricky Russell there of about 57 seconds and then another 31 seconds back to Ben Kelly there in the number four spot uh, have we seen no Jonathan Johnson yet? Trevor, uh, Bollinger. Trevor Bollinger checks in. Oh, and there is Ashburn. Ashburn checks in behind Bollinger by about nine and a half seconds. And still no Jonathan Johnson. But, hey, how about Trevor Bollinger, man? Uh, 
he's got to feel good about this. I mean, I, I was feeling good for Bollinger when he was back in the seventh spot. Right now he's up into fifth in the OA. So rolling. Oh, there's Jonathan Johnson, and he bumps Bollinger down. He bumps Ashburn down. So Jonathan nope. Johnson up into five. We spoke about it a minute ago. There has been a swap for the lead position. Craig DeLong back out front. Oh, my goodness. And Stu, Stu hey. there in the number two spot. That will not be. You, we've talked about it before. Nothing. Mikey, you do the podium, have done the podium interviews. I'm sure you guys hear it now that you're doing the podium interviews. What we think is kind of a straightforward right. race. A lot of times after the race, I'm like, yeah, I went down on this lap. We passed each other 14 times. You know, and you're like, well, wait a minute. You guys, every time we saw you on camera, you were in the same spot. So much happens out cam out off of camera out there on the racetrack. And on a day like today, you get to see a little more of it. Yeah, we talk about that every race all kinds of stuff happening up there on the podium they tell you about all the different stuff hey we got together at this point you thought that they were at the exact same point at 17 seconds separating yeah. them the entire time they've swapped positions got back in the lead got that time back all kinds of stuff happening out there that we can't see ever-changing gncc gotta love it cool today with the shots that we've had how many times we've seen change-ups throughout the lap uh, may not have all of our cameras operational due to the weather but uh, it has been cool to see how many times we've gotten to see passes and uh, the change-ups happen here Ricky Russell there now in the number three spot again fresh set of Scott goggles and hammer down working his way up that very rocky climb there that and about another easy yeah making it very feet on the pegs Mercy. you know Ricky's Ricky's got that balance he's a uh, Washington State guy spent a lot of time uh, over the years just riding up in the mountains. I, I get some uh, snaps and some videos from him from sometimes, and they're often places where there are no trails. They're making right. their own trails, yeah. basically pushing their bike up uh, up mountains. And here is BK, the uh, FMF Red Bull KTM. Little different line there, kind of going around where Ricky went straight up the middle, but he is in pursuit, trying to make up time there and uh, see if he can grab that final podium position. But he needs to make haste. He's got some time yet to yep. make up. Yeah, every point counts for Ben Kelly right now. He is going to need him. There's no doubt about that. Kind of funny watching Ben Kelly. I always think about you watch riding style, especially in conditions like this where you can't really see number plates, jerseys. Ben Kelly and our buddy we were talking about yesterday, Chris Bach, always stand out to me as the guys that is like, okay, if I can't pick out anybody else to the uh, extent that Johnny Gallagher can, I can always find Ben. And back in the day, I could always find Chris Bach. He always had those elbows up high. And, you know, he's also like seven foot five. So, yeah, they else? both ride the bike very tall. Yeah. Um, the other thing with Ben is uh, you see a lot with him. He leads with his head. Yes. Uh, he kind of puts his head where he wants the bike to go and leads with his upper body and then lets the bike follow in. Uh, so those are some traits that you can kind of see, you know, with uh, with a guy like Craig, you know, you're looking for stature. He's, he tends <laughs> yes. to be a little bit smaller. A lot of times we look at hydration packs, yep. uh, you know, all the different little things you can look. Because on a race like today, I mean, you can't see numbers. That's but, it. Yeah, it's out the window. Speaking of uh, hydration packs, Trevor Bollinger always with the uh, Camelback yep. hydration pack rather than the hip style, which Craig DeLong wears. So there is your fifth place rider. And as you pointed out, you know, great ride for him here today, Mikey, uh, would definitely be one of his better rides so far in 2023, yeah. if not likely his best. Right. And that's got to feel good for Bollinger, too. He's had some bad luck. Uh, even when he gets back into the action, it seems like he either goes down, doesn't get a good start, but isn't able to really show what he's capable of doing as we see Jordan Ashburn now on screen. Uh, but for Bollinger, got to be just trying to, to take the positives here the rest of 2023. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's had a long time off from racing. And there is your XC2 leader, Jonathan Johnson. We haven't gotten nearly as many shots of him as we'd like to. Uh, but, you know, we've been uh, following that battle up front. And right now he is up front. What is his gap there, Mikey, if we refresh? Uh, uh, let's see, Jonathan Johnson, XC2, Liam Draper in the two spot, back 56 and a half seconds. So just about a minute gap, Jonathan Johnson has built up and maintained uh, sitting there in that number five spot in the overall, but more importantly, I'm sure for him at this point, leading the way in that XC2 class and what I believe, I won't speak for us, I believe would be his <laughs> first ever XC2 win, uh, but I know, uh, I did check, it would be by far his best finish this year, his previous best being a sixth place coming at round number six so definitely uh a big step you know for him and, yeah. and that beta team obviously we did see evan smith running very much up front early in this race in that xc1 class on that 430 rr beta unfortunately having seemingly dropped outside the top 20 now look at this here comes some pressure in the xc2 class liam draper there in the number two spot then it's the 282 of mike wikowski and that is grant baylor from the xc1 class there behind them but that is the battle for second place in that xc2 class and that is heating up for sure 
I mean, talk about uh, heated battles there. We saw just here in this shot a little bit ago, Craig DeLong and Stu Baylor bar to bar. I mean, uh, we're full on banging, even coming through the mechanics area, uh, getting, you know, within a bike length of each other, showing each other a wheel, uh, maybe even opening up the door for a little bit of contact out here. Well, we're getting, get, getting a little update from our producer. Sounds like a possibly a new leader. We're gonna wait to see when we get him in the next camera shot. Maybe this is it. Yeah, and to your point, that's exactly it. I mean, these guys are, you know, we see them on camera and, and uh, again, the more it changes, the more it stays the same, it seems like, but the battle is raging furiously out there. These guys are trading paint, yep. inside lines, outside lines, making moves, and uh, in a lot of cases, probably elbowing each other out of the way to get to the front. It's, it's no longer chess at this point. It's a boxing match here well, to the checkered flag. Exactly, and, and it kind of makes sense going off of the news that we hear. Uh, that sounds like Stu Baylor's area to me. Yeah. It, it, he seems like yeah. the guy where it's like, hey, you're going to have to make a little contact. You're going to have to make mm -hmm. a pass. You're not going to be gifted anything. I see Stu getting a big smile on his face. Yeah, that's right. And, and Craig DeLong's got to find that inner Mike Tyson somewhere. He's got to bite an ear off. It's not the size of the dog in you the know? fight. It's the fight <laughs> in the dog, right? He's got to find that dog in him. So oh, we'll, uh, we'll see if he's got that dog in him because uh, this is going to come all the way down to the wire. I just want these guys to stay close to each other. They can That's stay within it, a couple man. bike lanes. This is going to be really wow. exciting. Uh, both of them have put in such a good race. I'd hate for something, uh, a silly mistake, a mechanical, something to take away from in the closing stages. Well, and, and, you know, we're talking about this battle, and we're talking about, you know, the dog in them and the elbowing and the brawling and the boxing and all. I mean, think about those last couple chicanes. I mean, we see them yeah, lap after to, lap, yeah. kind of tiptoeing their way through there, single file, nice and polite. Nobody's really trying to pass. Now, suddenly you make that the final turns of the race. I think we're going to see all that politeness go out the window. If either one of these guys has a shot, they're going to be, you know, looking to bank off the other guy's front wheel and make the turn. And, heck, I mean, you can't even be mad about it. Like, it, Cody, it's for a race win. Cody Collier might have thought he had the most gnarliest pass at the finish line this weekend. We may see something more gnarly here before this one's up. I think we actually have a specialized uh, replay of that pass. Nope, Craig DeLong back, back in front. front. Yeah, yeah, that was Craig right there. Around. There goes Stu. <laughs> okay, so that's, well, it's, we were going to play in. a replay, but we just saw it live, the pass back by Craig. So, uh, yeah, like we said, you're only going to need the edge of your seat at this yeah. point. That, that's ancient history. That pass yeah, happened. Old news now. That pass happened a quarter mile ago. They've passed each other My a couple goodness. times since then. So just kidding. Back and forth. The boxing match continues. So we're wow. just getting finished with the eighth round. The boxing match going to continue here as we have a couple miles left to go. Stu Baylor versus Craig DeLong. There is the old iron fist. Uh, I know exactly what that signal means. We're going to get a word from our sponsors, and then we're going to come back and close this thing out. Who's going to be grabbing the win here at the Mountaineer GNCC?
born of family values and a homegrown work ethic, Kemetic Gaskets seals your machine so you can focus on the finish line. Kemetic Gaskets are the competitive standard for racers who demand the very best. Kemetic Gaskets are constructed from superior materials designed to perform in the most demanding environment. Whether it's championships on the line or a day in the dirt with friends, professionals and enthusiasts depend on Kemetic. Kemetic Gaskets sealing championships since 1989. Amsoil runs on freedom and has since 1972. We punish our products firsthand in our world-class laboratories and beyond because some things can't be learned from a test tube. Run with us. Last season was my best season ever by far. I won a lot of races, I won a championship, and it was my, also my first year using Arma. And one of the things I noticed was just my ability to string good days together. You know, like especially in the summertime in Florida where you're riding every day and the heat index is 108 degrees and you're doing 230s and going to the gym and bicycle and, and all that stuff. I think in the past I've been super inconsistent day to day. Yeah, I may have a, you know, a good race here or, you know, a good day during the week there. But overall, I think where I improved the most was my consistency in my recovery. GNCC Racing on Racer TV is brought to you by Progressive. You could save hundreds on your car insurance. Specialized. Specialized turbo e-bikes. It's you, only faster. Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Get ready. All right, guys. So uh, clearly, this this beautiful drone shot was not taken today. Yeah. But this is this is where we were yesterday. This is a beautiful scenic uh, West Virginia. This is what we know and love. This is a little more like it. This is this morning, folks, uh, doing some youth highlights here. Uh, it was muddy. It was gritty. It was nasty. But it's nothing new. This is what we've had here uh, in the 2023 Progressive GNCC Series so far this year. And uh, going to take a look. That's your YXC1 Super Mini Series. Look at him getting pumped up. This yeah. James Jenkins there. He found himself on the box. He, he's getting psyched up beforehand. There in the center of the box is the 414 of Caleb Wood. Not going to grab the whole shot, but he did grab the early lead this morning. He is another one of those racers. Just last night, you hearing that Dude. right, folks? Last Dude. night, he was in Chicago racing the SMX race. Made the trip overnight. He's out here this morning. And uh, looking at a couple more starts there, there goes the 314. But it was it was an all-out battle in that YXC1 Super Mini Senior. Caleb Wood on the 414, right, yeah, so, uh, having uh, some mechanical issues. I had a pretty good start, but uh, on that second corner, I got pinched off for the inside. So I was like pretty much all the way back in the pack. I uh, made my way into third, but then I crashed and I fell all the way back to eighth. But uh, I was just picking my way one by one, and there's so much kids making mistakes. And uh, more towards the end, I know James Jenkins was catching up to me, so I was making sure I uh, put a good sprint lap at the end, and uh, I finished first, thankfully. <laughs> So that was Ryan Amancio on the 360 machine being credited with your YXC1 Super Mini Senior win, and he got the overall win as well, and that was a difficult uh, feed out there. He had to work his way on those final few laps into the overall number one spot, but a great job there from the 360 of Ryan Amancio grabbing the win. And uh, like we said, for all ages, guys, the, the XC1 all the way down to the YXC1, there were 65s out there. Rain or shine, we're going GNCC yeah, yeah. racing. They're going for it. That's right. Not phased. Not phased. Yeah, shout out, by the way, Caleb Wood, uh, Canyon Richards. We talked extensively about him. As a matter of fact, uh, i got to give Canyon Richards a shout out. Megawatt texted me. He said, hey, if you see our boy Canyon, tell him he's on the Mega Militia now. Oh, okay. He's like, he officially qualifies. So there you go, Canyon Richards. 
Yeah, that was a gnarly crash he took last <laughs> night. For him Mercy. to get up and, and be back out here racing today, let alone contending for a top spot, uh, speaks volumes about just how tough these kids are. Ooh. Yeah, and, and it takes a, a, a mental toughness as well yeah. to be able to go to a completely different field. I know uh, us announcing at Loretta Lens, we talked about Canyon. We talked about yeah. Caleb saying, hey, this is going to be a little weird for him, going from the woods racing mm -hmm. to the to the motocross racing there at Loretta Lens. Uh, both of them, they had their issues, but they had some great performances yep. as well. Then let's go to the whole different side here. Let's go to Super cross racing and uh, we talked to Caleb thankfully he didn't have a big one anything like yeah. that obviously Canyon's had a lot going on but we did see Caleb this morning had a big smile and I was like what'd you think man uh, how you feeling and he's like it was cool I really like the woods I yeah, really yeah. enjoy the woods. So uh, I think Caleb would enjoy himself uh, trying to figure out where he wants his future to go. And as far as the comfort, I think he likes being right here in GNCC. Yeah, that's a big stage for those little guys. I mean, they did a phenomenal job, all of them. And even a week ago, we saw the 65s out there at yep. the SMX. You know, uh, they were really ripping. But they, uh, they managed to you know make that track look a lot easier than it is. Um, you know, but if you saw any of the practice reels, I mean, oh, was that possibly – Maybe. Oh, I wasn't looking, Johnny. I just caught the big hand guards out of the corner of my eye. Well, let's see who this is. No, no, that is not one of our leaders there. I'm gonna hope not because I don't want I don't no gaps. Yeah, no gaps. I want this to come no, wheel, to wheel, wheel to wheel, handlebar to handlebar. We want to see contact coming That's through it. the final corners. Everybody stay upright. Everybody That's safe. It. But we want to see contact. I want it to be a wild finish. Zach Heron and Jackson Burrell making their way down to the finish line as we are uh, approaching. A checkered flag here in about 15 minutes, but, uh, boy, it's a haul over there. And whether, you know, they, they were in the boat. That's kind of what I'm getting at. They, they just jumped in the uh, pontoon boat. They're heading to the finish line. <laughs> Take them a minute. The jet skis wouldn't fire up. That's it. The jet skis are having trouble. I think they got them from uh, eastbound and down. Why can't I think of his name? Kenny Powers. Danny, Kenny Powers. Yeah. I want to say Danny McDonald. I don't know where I pulled that name. from, but. <laughs> Mercy. So, all right. Mikey, let's break this down. We got right. our top three. Uh, last we saw on screen, it was actually Craig DeLong leading the way, Stu Baylor in second, Ricky Russell third, Ben Kelly fourth. Uh, again, we do know Jonathan Johnson leading the way or was leading the way in that XC2 class. You know, think about what this does for the championship picture with Stu Baylor and Craig DeLong tied for that points lead. Uh, whichever of the two of them comes out on top, obviously going to be the sole points leader with two rounds remaining, obviously putting themselves in the driver's seat for this championship. But if you're Ben Kelly sitting back there in that fourth place spot, already had a few points to make up coming yep. into this weekend, you know, it, the urgency to make that time to make those passes to, you know, he's already come from outside the top 10 up to fourth, yep. you know, valuable points gained. But, you know, he's fighting, clawing, clamoring for each point. What do you think this does and and was this kind of what you were expecting coming into today or, uh, you know, seeing the two riders tied for the championship battling for the lead here on the final lap of racing? Can't be biased, of course, but it went through my head at the start of this race. Like, Ben Kelly wasn't really in, like, the conversation. He should have been because he's only four points back. He's in this thing. But the fact that, that Stu and Craig are tied, it was all focused on those guys. Oh, they're tied for the points lead. So I almost kind of had Ben Kelly picked as my favorite to win today just because, hey, nobody's talking about me. That's fine. You don't have to. Ben's not that kind of guy. He's, he doesn't care if you are or not. Um, so I just had a feeling Ben Kelly was going to come out today swinging, grab a win, and then things get real interesting. Uh, how how uh, Stu, I expected a podium at least. The long, a podium at least uh, is certainly a top five. So – things mixed up a little bit compared to what i expected and then now i kind of feel for ben because it's like it's it's like that dream where you're running and you're not moving i mean that's almost like the results for ben today is like well crap i got a top five but yeah. i didn't finish in front of the two guys i need to finish in front of sure and if he finishes where he runs right now uh in that fifth place spot he would find himself 16 points yeah. out of that championship lead whichever of the it provided that either Stu or yes. uh craig win this race so you know from going four points down to 16 points down that's a that's a big change obviously uh not out of it by any means oh Everything no could flip flop very next race but uh you know you want to keep yourself as close as you possibly can and, and make every point that you possibly can so if you're Stu, you know obviously um you know one-on-one -on -one with craig I, I think 
we talked about it before. Craig is kind of a lot of these guys' little brother. You know, he's actually spent time with Stu training over the years, um, riding together. Oh, there is your leader. I believe that was Stu Baylor that just came through the camera shot uh -oh, there. Oh, where's Craig? And I hate to. There is Oh, there Craig. he is. So not a big Charging. gap, but there is a gap. Uh, just a few seconds, um, but they can still see each other in the longer stretches of racetrack. So these guys keeping track of each other, but again, another lead change. Stu Baylor out front. Um, if I believe, if you're Craig DeLong, you need this one today, and here's why. Stu Baylor leaves here alone with the points lead. Yes, there's still two rounds remaining. You don't give anyone the number one plate, but if you're Craig DeLong, you need to wrestle this one right out of Stu's yeah. hands because I believe that leaves Stu kind of questioning, hey, that's a little long. I'm not supposed to have to worry about him on the last yeah. lap of these races. Like, yeah, he's a good rider. He's consistent. But the ones that he's won, he hasn't really had to battle me kind of a thing. So, and if you're Stu Baylor, obviously getting the win is just another little, you know, feather in your cap, a little yeah. more confidence. So I think very important for both of these guys to try and walk away here with the win today, not just for the points, but the momentum and the confidence that comes along with it. I mean, if you, if you reset, you reshuffle the deck, whatever, whatever cliche you want to use, they're, they're tied at 178. Let's just call it zero. I mean, yeah. you're both at zero. We both have a shot, and we got three rounds of racing. So it's a one, two, three playoff, essentially, um, between really those three guys, uh, between Stu and, uh, and and Craig. So this is the foundation race. This is that pivotal race. And we have more than where we normally have a week in between races. We got a little longer for Craig or Stu, whoever ends up in that two spot, to think about it yep. and dwell on it yep. and just – uh, you know, seconds feel like minutes, minutes feel like hours, hours feel like days. Well, I mean, I think right now with, I mean, again, Jordan Ashburn, a lot of other guys, not mathematically out of this championship. Correct. Yet, but if you throw the blanket over the, the top three coming into today, you know, these are the guys that probably just labored over the thoughts yes. of this championship throughout the summer. Uh, and now here we are with reining in on a checkered flag, meaning only two rounds yeah. remaining. Uh, you know, I, I think to keep yourself in that conversation, it's you got to get those wins. you got to be up there. Um, and especially when, well, is that Stu there? No, I thought it was, but I don't think it was. It was. That, that was. No, 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 no. No, no. seven one nine excited. right there. Getting excited. We, that was we, Stu Baylor they didn't cover her, though. two miles of racetrack in that amount of time. But we're excited. We want to see this <laughs> we're thing ready to see it. come down to the final, final turns and the final miles. And uh, to keep yourself in that conversation again, like I was saying, you need those wins, uh, especially when, you know, you have the three guys in the championship battle running inside the top four. It, it doesn't leave a lot of room to make up points. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not a lot of room, not a lot of time. Normally after summer break, for those that uh, maybe don't know, we normally have four rounds of racing. This year uh, we only do in 12 rounds, so we've only got three rounds of racing, which is also explains the kind of longer break we've got in between uh, round 10 and round 11. Can see the challenge just getting up that. Ooh. You can see he just wants to get to the top yeah, of that hill. He knows he's getting please, near the finish Lordy. line, and I am venturing to guess that once he gets there, he will not be completing the final lap of racing. He looks like he is ready to call it a day. Uh, it's been challenging for him just to make it to this 10-mile marker. Oh, such a tough track out there today yeah, with these that's conditions. Rough. That's rough. You see things like that, and you know it's it's happening in several places. I mean, that was kind of our delay earlier. It wasn't necessarily the weather at that point. It was, hey, we've got to get bikes out of the woods. I know we ha had a medical out there as well. Um, that's where your delays come in. It's not always necessarily the weather. It's just what it does to our riders and their machines. And I can't tell you, Mikey, the number of times over the years being out there during the 10 a.m. bike race on Sundays and kind of leaving the woods on the last lap as that WXT battle was kind of sorting itself out, trying to get to the finish line, I would look back and just see bottlenecks. And, Oof. and uh, you know, there's several hundred riders out there mm -hmm. in the afternoon, but there's usually... So in some cases, upwards of three times as many riders yeah. in that 10 a.m. race. And I, I'm not exaggerating. I've looked back at, uh, like, Steel Creek back in the day or Iron Man in, oh, yeah. in tough conditions and seen three, 400 bikes just oh. sitting and knowing, like, well, this afternoon race can't possibly start on time because Man. they have to figure out a way to get all these guys up this hill through yeah. this ravine and then just to the next obstacle. Right. Uh, so when conditions get like this, it is incredibly difficult for our track crew, but they do a great job of keeping things moving and, and keeping the, uh, the course clear. That's it. Waiting on our leaders here at mile marker number 10. I think we probably got, honestly, probably a couple of more minutes before we see them check in. 
in uh, what will be a five-lap race when it's all said and done. There was some talk of, hey, are we going to throw the white flag? Is it going to be a four-lap race? No, we got the two-lap card. I couldn't be happier about that. I'm glad it's uh, it's going the distance for these guys to see what uh, Stu and what Craig can, can swing at each other at this point. Uh, and honestly, that last gap we saw was one of the bigger gaps we've seen, even though it was only maybe three seconds. Yeah. Um, that was one of the bigger gaps we've seen between Craig and Stu. It's almost like they've marked each other the last right. couple laps. When Ricky was leading, they didn't seem to have quite the intensity. Uh, but the minute that either Craig or Stu got to the lead, we'd see the other immediately pounce, yeah. match, and say, nope, that's my guy. I need those points. We're tied. I'm and get that five-point jump on me. And uh, it seems like that's kind of the way it's been sorting itself out this last lap and a half or two laps. going to be good, man. I'm, I'm ready to watch this one. I don't want it to end, but I'm ready to watch it end. We got we got some sure. pushing action coming up there. Yamaha banners. And uh, it gives you an idea, like we talked about, just how challenging this course is. These guys all uh, excellent riders in their own right, or they wouldn't be in this afternoon race. Uh, likely probably winning uh, in their local series yeah. and, and up oh, there yeah. battling for podium positions, and then they come here in conditions like this, and it, it really shows you just how talented and disciplined our top riders are. So leaders do in here to this shot probably two and a half, three minutes, sounds like. And if you look at the uh, race clock, that's showing that this race will go the full the yeah. distance that it needs to be considered a full race, even with the inclement conditions and the discussions about possibly cutting it mm -hmm. short. Uh, we're going to be probably upwards of 245 here, uh, meaning that uh, the right call was made by Racer Productions to let this go another lap, uh, despite the very rough conditions out there, and uh, let this thing sort itself out. Like you said, really uh, leaving no question today, at least, to who is the better rider. When they cross the finish line, somebody's going to have absolutely earned this one. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm also looking forward to those post-race interviews. I want to hear those conversations, what was going on on the track, how are the guys feeling, and uh, what are they going to say to kind of take a jab, maybe a subtle jab at the other guy or maybe a not-so-subtle jab uh, to try and get in the, in, in, in the other guy's head. So. I, I think unfold. of the two that are running up front right now, I, I don't know that I've ever really heard Craig play the head games. No. Maybe I've missed no. it. Um, and, you know, that's just part of who Stu is. I mean, he, he's done it um, going back even to his XCT yeah. days. Um, so that's that's a part of his rep repertoire and his racecraft yeah. is trying to get inside these guys' heads. And, you know, he definitely shows he has the stuff on the track. And sometimes he likes to make those little comments on social that's media. It. And uh, So I would say likely regardless of how this one shakes out both of these guys are going to be thankful that it's over for sure whether for win sure. lose or draw uh this has been a tough one here today and really tested these these guys and their machines throughout the day they got to take some notes craig's got to take so he needs to watch some old like walker fowler interviews because walker has such a methodical way uh okay uh, when he does a post-race interview, if you, if you really kind of read between the lines of some of the things, you can tell Walker was always kind of playing some head games, but he did it in such a really professional way that if you weren't really paying attention, you did it goes right over your head. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah I think Craig is just... He wants to win. He, he's a competitor for sure. But I think Craig is just so grateful to be in the position that he's in, to have the ride that he has, the people around him, that he opportunities that he does. It's almost sometimes, and, and a lot of people would look at this as a detriment, I think sometimes Craig wakes up and almost like has to pinch himself and say, yeah. like, hey, I'm in this thing. I'm yeah. battling. And then he kind of starts to get that little bit of swagger of, hey, man, I, I, I'm not just here by chance. Yeah, I'm in I'm this because yeah. I put in the work. I, I know I can win these races. I have the speed. I have the people around me. I'm, uh, you know. I'm here because I should be here. Yeah, and, and he is. You're absolutely right. We talked about it earlier, you know, the, the path he's taken. And uh, back then it was the Coastal Racing Husk Varna team and getting a call up to the Rockstar Husky team. And it was it was basically, to your point, Johnny, it was a lot of guys in his corner saying, you know, you're our guy. We, we need you to go out and perform. And he's answered to that. And it sounds like our leaders are getting close here to mile marker number 10. And it sounds like Stu still out in front, according to some radio traffic we're hearing. 514 leading. And 10-mile marker should be coming up here. 
just about any second we should see him on screen and you guys will get to see this battle for yourself and it sounds like they are back to basically wheel to wheel and right together uh, with just barely over a mile of racing to go but we do still have right after this shot yeah. you go down you make a left you got a couple chicanes and then you have that FMF power point and that truly could turn out to be the deciding factor in today's race there he is Stu Baylor the 514 machine no pressure from behind it is Stu all alone uh, just how far back Craig is we'll have to wait and see here we're told he's right with him and there he is so yep. still very much in striking distance but Stu has just enough distance that he doesn't have to worry about Craig running in and out in a corner right now. So they're going to be interesting, like you said, Craig, certainly in striking distance. And I, with the traffic behind him, I got to think those guys said, oh, well, there is a major race going on. Let me move out of the way and let these boys through. Here we go into the FMF PowerPoint. Sue Baylor keeping it on two wheels. Little dab right there, but looking smooth. Lapper in front of him. Can he get around him? Yes. Now can Craig. You can see that lapper kind of moving to the side and giving way and saying there's a race going by. I don't want to be a part of this nope. right now. Man, that one is really going to come down to the final turns. Right now, Stu has just enough of a gap. Again, like I said, not really having to worry about Craig being able to run it in his line away in a corner uh, but if Craig can get just a couple bike lengths closer you know he can kind of take those those shots and there is a couple tricky little sections coming up before the finish you got a bunch of off cameras and a long rocky straightaway we're actually a junior yesterday basically crash it away in just the final uh, miles giving up that fourth place spot to Walker Feller and here you, you can even see how deep the ruts are coming into the finish line so uh, right. nothing nothing to take for granted you know the slightest miscue or wrong line choice could uh, really be the deciding factor in this race here today. So getting down to the nitty gritty here, looks like Stu Baylor might be poised to take a win here. He's got to keep it on two wheels and bring it home for a checkered flag and he will walk away with a win and more importantly, a points lead. A big points lead, no, but <laughs> a points lead nonetheless. One that you know Craig DeLong wanted after today. One you know Ben Kelly wanted after today after today but looks like five points is better than no points that's right <laughs> that is absolutely right tide coming into today and one of these two is going to be leave here it was Stu baylor uh leading when we saw him last at the 10 mile marker just a moment ago and we're watching this shot here expecting this right hand corner then they've got one more straightaway back down into the woods for just about 100 yards a very very slippery off camber coming up and then two right handers coming into the finish line so this will be kind of the uh the way things are sorted out here you can see this is another angle from our drone so we're actually going to see the ruts coming out as well as the corner as it enters the field so a great shot here from our yamaha racing live drone of the two title combatants coming in Stu baylor leading the way craig delong in second and we are expecting them literally any moment there is there he is 514 of Stu Baylor, no pressure from behind. There is Craig DeLong coming up the middle, running it right up the deepest rut, doing anything oh, and everything. Craig. A slight little stumble there, and that's going to cost him just yep. enough time. That may have been the move that decided it right there. Yeah, a little struggle right there for Craig DeLong. Stu able to stretch it out, keep it on two wheels. There Smoking, he goes. chug a lugging. Pull it on the twist in the throttle. There you go. Make some noise. A 5 1 4. Stu Baylor will take the win. And more importantly, he will take the points lead into the Buckwheat 100. That man is excited, exhausted, <laughs> all of the above. Name it. Oh, Stu's got to feel good. Well, we won't crown a champion today in the XC1 class, but by God, it's. Uh, setting up to be a wild finish to the 2023 season and how about that he steps off the bike a pat on the back for craig and craig there with a solid second place finish but nonetheless a little bit of frustration too johnny uh, yeah i mean you, craig looks like you know the type of guy that <clears throat> he kind of takes it with a grain of salt but inside i'm sure he's feeling like he really really wanted that but yeah. i also feel like as long as he knows he did everything that he could i'm sure he could go back through and say well it could have been this corner i could have yeah, taken right this there. line almost on you know I but at the same lips. time you know <laughs> Stu baylor has that same story to tell there were times where he yeah. was in the lead and it got away from him uh looks like craig maybe talking about where he got stuck right before the yeah. end and gave up a little time you could see he's saying i'm giving it everything i had but it just i couldn't get unstuck so he, wa uh, he wants it though yeah I absolutely mean, i mean both both of these guys want it, and uh, it was a battle today, and it couldn't have been any closer. 
Yeah, I mean, absolutely. absolutely. But I love the body language there by Craig. You can see the disappointment. He wanted that first place finish. And he is going to be a hungry, hungry man these last couple of rounds. And Stu Baylor going to leave here today as the points leader and the momentum into Buckwheat 100, man. It's, it's going to be a... Uh, a wild few weeks in between. Jo Johnny Gerard there in street clothes. So oh, obviously Johnny looking G. like he's okay. Uh, something ending his race early. We could uh, venture to guess that obviously his bike was, was unable to complete the event for one reason or another. Uh, and we will wait and see. We do still have our final podium position battle coming in. Uh, there was about a 30 second gap between Ricky Russell there in third and Ben Kelly in fourth. Uh, we will see if that continues to finish out that way. Yeah, not them there, or is Ben able to make up the gap and potentially try to grab a couple more valuable championship points? Will it be the 212 Ampro Yamaha of Ricky Russell or the 530 FMF Red Bull KTM of Ben Kelly coming up out of the woods? And there is Ricky. the 212 of Ricky Russell going to get it done for that final podium position here today, leading much of this one and uh, taking a look over his shoulder to see if he does get it done and does cross the finish line there in that third place spot for the final position on the podium. By the way, Ricky Russell looking over his shoulder right there. I think maybe Ben put a little bit of time on him. Maybe you heard him back there or something. Or just yeah. getting that, <laughs> he wants the visual, the visual confirmation that, hey, I got third. I'm good. Yeah, it could have just been. Oh, and there is maybe Ben Kelly just checked in. It is the 530 of Ben Kelly checking in in that number four spot uh, just off the podium. Putting a good run in there that last lap trying to close up the gap. But Ricky Russell holding strong and maintaining that final podium position. So we know scoring up salt with our own eyes. So standing by, we'll have some uh, post-race interviews. Uh, stick around. You're going to want to hear those. I guarantee it. You're going to want to hear from Stu Baylor and uh, Craig DeLong getting their thoughts. And Ricky Russell, a solid day here today as well. Yeah, and Ricky Russell as well. I mean, he led quite a bit of this race. Yeah. You know, it would be good to hear from his perspective, you know, what exactly it was that happened there on lap number four that uh, allowed that race to sort itself out and those two guys to get by him and, and take that point position away. So Ricky there sitting, you can see him cleaning the, the, uh, the gloves, getting himself uh, ready to go for his podium interview. Looks like we got Jackson Burrell down there. Also Zach is looking for, I believe, Craig DeLong. Looks like we've got Jackson with Ricky Russell. Ricky leading much of this race today, getting those eyes cleaned out, but uh, we'll get his word on exactly how this one went down and shook out today. All right, guys, I'm here with your third overall, Ricky Russell. Man, a hard-fought charge today. Take us through this muddy race. Oh, man, it was a, it was a wild, wild adventure. Uh, got to just a start and was able to uh, kind of pick my way through. I was being really patient. Just there was a lot of places to make mistakes. And just before I knew it, I was in the lead. And then kind of felt like last year, just kind of managing the race and just kind of riding to my own potential. And then... With about two to go again, like last year, I kind of had a lot of mistakes. I uh, got stuck and fell over, lost rear brakes, and then the bike kept dying the last lap. But we were able to keep her, keep, keep her going for third place, so I'll take it. Um, and uh, It's not the win, but um, we're back on the box after uh, the season we've had so far. Congratulations on the third place. What is the plan going forward? How do you feel? Well, obviously, the plan is to just keep improving. So. You know, like two more positions to improve, we should be uh, in, in good shape. Uh, we're just, this whole year, we've been trying to figure things out a little bit on this new model, and I think we're really getting it dialed in. Factor Connection got me better set up for the rocks, and I, I, it showed today because I was able to uh, charge like I wanted to where I wasn't, wasn't uh, scared, and um, hopefully we can uh, have a repeat of Ironman at, uh, from last year at the next two, be on the, be on the center of the box. All right, everybody, that is your third overall, Ricky Russell. All right, there you go. We're waiting on uh, live scoring to update, but uh, we do know the top four as they came across. Obviously, your winner, Stu Baylor, second place, Craig DeLong. Ricky Russell there, we just spoke to the number at the podium on that Ampro Yamaha, and then your number four spot was the 530 of Ben Kelly. So that uh, a shake up there in the championship standings. Stu Baylor now will be alone atop the point standings as the leader. Uh, Craig DeLong will be there in second, will be five points behind. Yep. And uh, if my math is correct, I'll have to go back and check, but I believe it will be 16 points back now to Ben Kelly there in the uh, number three spot in the championship. We are still waiting on Jordan 
Ashburn. We're still waiting on our, uh, looks like we may have just seen, there is your XC2 winner, Jonathan, Jonathan Johnson, Johnson coming across the finish line. You can see that team, all of his buddies just absolutely exuberant. Uh, Pump Trevor Bollinger did come across. We see yeah, him there. Yeah, correct. Congrats. Uh, Ashburn and Bollinger did check in. There you go. So your fifth and sixth place riders getting a congratulations there from Stu Baylor. Jonathan Johnson, known as a mud rider uh, and absolutely coming through today. There you see Evan Smith, his teammate, who was having a phenomenal ride there today. Oh, yeah. Uh, was unable to make it to the finish, but it looks like we do have Zach Heron down here with today's winner, Stu Baylor. He's got himself cleaned up a little bit, and he's got a, uh, a pork chop in his hand there. And uh, he's, uh, he's taking on the calories, getting ready for the next round. Yeah, guys, we are down here with Stu Baylor. He needed to get cleaned off, a little bit of rehydration after that race. Man, you got a big smile on the face. How you feeling? Man, I'm feeling good. That was, uh, you know, I, I, I really, really thought I could break Greg, and that was the intentions. And we were tit for tat. I mean, the, the, the passes for the lead, those, God, it was back and forth. I don't know how much you guys had on, on live feed or radios, but it was back and forth. Those last three, like, hell, the whole race, we were, you, Craig and I, you could throw a blanket over us. And um, man, one mistake, one mistake away was, was anyone's game. And, you know, I, I put down a heater. I was, I was sending it with two to go. And um, trying to put a gap on those guys, and I looked back and I was like, "Shit, he's matching me." And I knew, I knew then it was it was gonna have to be something I was working for. And you know, I I, I gotta say, I like flat out, I expected it from Ben, but not Craig. Like, hats off to him, man. That 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 kid's uh, elevated it this summer, and you know, it's good to see the whole sport. The whole sport right now is it's a good place to be a fan. I said it before the race. It's a good time to be a fan because it's gonna come down the wire. Absolutely, yeah. You've got a worthy adversary. He's, uh, I can see just in the hug after the race, he's earned your respect. When you guys, uh, your worthy competitors, you said you got a race. That last lap was a fight. Anyway, that's what we were saying up in the tower. I mean, a little bit of bar banging, a little bit of rubbins racing. We like to see it. That's to take away. Yeah, definitely. You know, I, I used to battle Craig's older brother, Andrew, like that in XC2. It was clean the whole time. And, and you know, what's fun, what's fun when racing somebody like that is the way that we pause and check out a section and the difference in, in the way we were riding in the track today. And uh, it was just like riding with his older brother. We get to a section, scan around, plan your line and, and just send it and hope for the best. And, uh, you know, it, I mean, the track was was 100 yards wide in places and um, it was uh, we were just trying to follow each other and get her, get through the chaos. It was uh, it, it was fun in conditions like these though uh, Obviously, you got to ride the bike, but you need a lot of people helping you out and stuff like this Who do you need to thank? Yeah, most definitely the whole Rocky Mountain Tealy Energy KTM team uh, My mechanic man. He's he's been grinding the last couple weeks We've been on the road 18 days straight like we had this little thing We said, you know, they can beat us on skill, but they're not gonna outwork us and, and I promise they didn't so um, you know, between them and F F FC, Factory Connection, we spent seven days up there and, and 14, 14 riding hours of testing, and, and it all pays off. We came in here with two different settings, tested this week, and, and just kind of finalized everything. Steel City Men's Clinic, Browns RV, Superstore, Loud Fuel Co., ODI, XC Gear, Dunlop Tires, Tusk Racing, MSR, Redline Oil, uh, my wife, my family, everybody that makes it possible, all the rest of the team, uh, Cabral, everybody, Brett, the guys out in the woods, Todd, for doing all this. And, man, we're, we're looking forward to a better near, year next year. He had to fight for it, but it's Stu Baylor walking away with your XC1 win. A huge congrats to the 514. Well, there you go. There's the uh, perspective from the guy that got it done today. And as he said, an absolute battle right down to the finish. Uh, thinking he'd be able to break Craig DeLong and ultimately couldn't. Craig was able to match him tit for tat, step for step, and uh, brought it down right to the final corners. But Stu Baylor ultimately getting the job done, getting the win. Craig DeLong there in second, and Ricky Russell rounding out the top three. And speaking of Craig DeLong, we're down here with Jackson Burrell, and he has Craig DeLong, today's second place finisher. All right, guys, I am here with your second overall, Craig DeLong. Craig, man, what a battle coming down pretty much to the line there. Take us through that one. Yeah, that was a wild race, that's for sure. The first lap was uh, definitely just feeling it out, and uh, and Ricky kind of got in the lead and took off, and he was riding really well. And Stu and I were kind of back and forth, and, you know, I knew it was going to be a battle to the end. And uh, we got to the pit stop, and then it ended, eventually ended up being Stu and I. And then, uh, man, we went back and forth so many times, and that was uh, – as much as it, it hurts me to, to get second and, and pisses me off, but that was a fun battle. That was a great, great race. We were back and forth probably five and six times that last lap. Just he'd go one side of the trail, I go the other side, and we, you know, it was just kind of who, who, what line was better. And uh, 
he kind of got the best of me there later in the lap, and I had a run on him about the 10 mile marker. I got up alongside of him down the long straightaway, and I kind of hesitated with my pass, and I should have just stuck on it. And uh, I was on him all the way until, you know, the power point, and I was taking on a lot of roost, and I had to ditch my goggles, and that kind of kind of uh, put me back a little bit. So, um, yeah, it was a great race, but, you know, the guy that I need to beat beat me. So, um, yeah, I just have to, you know, be better next time. What a race, Craig, though. You stayed in there the entire time. How do you feel going into the, these last two rounds? I feel good, man. Uh, it was – It's obviously I knew Stu was going to come prepared, and, you know, I am too. So it's going to be a battle these last, you know, two races, and, uh, yeah, I got to get some points back. So we'll be ready. All right, we look forward to seeing it, guys. That is your second place, Craig DeLong. I like that interview from, from Craig right there. My, John Mikey, Gallagher. I saw the look on your face there <laughs> like the minute that. he said, you know, it kind of pissed me off. Yeah. Uh, or I'm kind of pissed off if I get mm -hmm. second. I saw you smile. Uh, you know, I think that's the, the little bit of chip that you've been looking yeah, to develop yeah. on he, Craig's he, shoulder. That's what you're talking about. Got to find that dog in him, and I think he may have just woken up the dog. So really looking forward to watching these last two rounds of racing. Cannot wait. There's your top ten. Stu Baylor taking the win and, more importantly, the points lead. Now poised and ready, trying to bring a championship home for the 5-1-4. Craig DeLong second, Ricky Russell, solid, solid day. Ben Kelly fourth and Ashburn rounding out the top five. Trevor Bollinger, solid ride from him, was consistent all day. And, and then Jonathan a big, big shakeup. Johnson. Oh, and Gus Angus Reardon. Yeah, wow. big shakeup there in that XC2 class. Jonathan Johnson obviously taking the win, but it was Liam Draper there yeah. in second, him dropping back to third. Angus Reardon jumping all the way up to that number two spot, and Mike Wachowski there in fourth. So uh, four XC2, XC2 guys in the top ten. Well represented right there. So, boy, interesting. Are we taking a look at our points, Adam? Maybe? No. Okay, fair enough. All right, they are. Got, uh, uh, we're trying to locate our XC2 winner, Jonathan Johnson, down there, the factory beta rider. Breakthrough day, his first XC2 win. Uh, so a great day for him. And uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, a lot of math going on down there, yeah. too. We do have that XC2 championship hanging in the balance. Uh, Liam Draper ultimately crossing the line in third. They're down there, they got the calculators out. That's right. I didn't see any championship shirts on yet. Uh, and okay. we are told that Jonathan Johnson went back to the rig, so we will not have, get him here today. But, uh, yeah, great ride for him and his first XC2 win. Yeah, congratulations to him. Sounds like he has taken off, but I think that is pretty well going to wrap things up for us. Uh, mercy sakes alive. We got two more rounds of GNCC. I cannot wait. What was your big takeaway today, Johnny? Sloppy conditions and great racing. Yes. And, uh, man, yeah, to see the two, two Titans like that up front throwing down and uh, – I'm with you. I, I think seeing that little bit of grit out of Craig DeLong, yeah, I think that good. may loom large here in the next couple races. Man, I hope so. I'm ready to watch it. Hey, uh, big shout out and thank you to Jackson Burrell, Zach Heron, Johnny G, Johnny Gallagher. Our camera operators, Adam, Matt, Josh, Mike, Leah, and Kirsten. Our drone pilot, Gabe. Our spotter, Hollywood. Our EIC engineer in charge, Jordan McFadden. Our director, Nick Vosberg. And we'll give a shout out to Griff Cotter as well. He helped us out this week. And our producer, Adam Gordon. Our executive producer, Kerry Russell. Uh, I want to say a uh, we love you and we miss you to Dylan Acord. That's going to wrap things up for us. I'm Mikey Waynes. We'll see you at the races.